Wow. You know, my daughter's crying to him. My daughter recently told him she felt like she was going to unalive herself. And this man texts her back with the wrong number to the, um, a wrong number to a suicide hotline. He gives, he gives her the suicide hotline wrong number through a text. I honestly felt like he was under some kind of like demonic possession from going to psychics. But then there was a day that I actually I came back home. This man had cut with a knife, a pentagram into the carpet. So when was Cal's relationship with Keenan? Like how did they fall? Were you around any of their, their relationship? Were they as close as everybody would think they would be? Oh my gosh, like that was his right hand man. Like, so for example, like Keenan was single. So honestly, I feel like Kel would use Keenan, the fact that he was single. They would always share hotel rooms. So when Kel was ordering up these prostitutes, like a pizza, um, Keenan was there and he'd always be like, um, well, I didn't do nothing with the prostitutes, but Keenan did. Like when I was signed to Interscope, um, I, my music, I didn't have cussing in it. And it was very like about political stuff. I'm into like, you know, like COINTELPRO and like, I'm into like pro-black political stuff. Um, so anyway, so I play them and they're like, what is this shit? They're like, what is this shit? They made Kel leave the room. I, they're like, we don't want your husband out the room. They corner me like in the room and they're like, you're supposed to be talking about pussy. You're supposed to be talking about, you know, popping it, like being a stripper. Like, I will tell you that um, Eddie Murphy was the one who, uh, <laughs> who uh, invited Kel to be the toy to his kids. Oh, sh well, I, I, I don't know if you ever seen uh, Eddie Murphy stand up, but he had a whole yeah. bit. Yeah, he did. He Bill did. Cosby. Yeah, he did. You're right. He did. Tell Bill to have a Coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. Yeah, he did. He did. You and and, right. and then Keenan go, I mean, not Keenan, I'm sorry. Kel go and he does that bit for Saturday Night Live, the, the audition, going at Bill Cosby. Right. Wow, that's a crazy connection right there. What's up, y'all? This is Master P. It's Naturi Naughton, a.k.a. Tasha from Power. Hey, Anthony Hamilton here. And I just want to let y'all know, go to nightanddaynetmarket.com. 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 And get yourself some product. They're a black-owned company. It has beautiful melanated products. T-shirts, shoes, bags. Hoodies, to shoes, to your the hair care products. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Oh, and make sure y'all check out the hot content they got on YouTube. Night and Day Network with the Curry Gang. Night and Day Network with the Curry Gang. With the host Isaiah Curry and the Curry Gang. We support them. We support Black, don't we? Let's do it for them. Anthony Hamilton here. And I'm a supporter. I'm going to check him out myself. God bless y'all. Continue. Bet on black. Gee, what's up, Curry Gang? So we here with Taisha Hampton, the ex-wife of Nickelodeon star Kel Mitchell from Keenan and Kel, Good Burger and all that. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? She's joining us tonight to tell her story. How you doing? Greetings, uh, Taisha. Hello, I'm doing well all right so let's just get right into it so how and when did you and uh kel mitchell meet and what was and what was this before his career with nickelodeon or after and did you know he was famous when you met him sure so actually i was supposed to be in good burger i was supposed to actually be riding a horse in good burger but the horse was having problems so i actually met him on the set of good burger I don't really watch television that much, um, so I had no idea that he was on Nickelodeon, that he had a TV show, that this was his movie, nothing. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So you met him there and y'all fell in love, like love at first sight, something like that? Something Along like those lines. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. No, um, he actually used, he, he's got game. He's got game, believe it or not. I think you have to have game maybe when you're when you're weak in other areas. But anyway, so yeah, so he used Whoa. some kind of <laughs> quick shot, huh? Quick shot at there. All right, go ahead. <laughs> he used he used some kind of some kind of psychological trick in order to get me. I guess to think about it. Anyway, he was taking so long to like. So we were talking for maybe like an hour or so. Then he was doing all this dancing and all this stuff, and um, then he was like. He just was standing there and I'm like, okay, so like, are you gonna get my phone number? Or like, what do we just do all this talking about? 
kind of how it went. So he got your number and he had you right there because he had the game, he had the whole psychological thing going, had you under a spell and everything, huh? He did. He caught me under his spell. We um, we went out that night and um, looked at the stars. I love looking at the stars and I love um, just being present in nature. And so that's what we would do, go to the beach and look at stars. I think the very first night the next day, he bought me a telescope. So it was awesome. He was, I mean, like, romance, hands down, so far, he's been very, very well with that. Did extremely well with that. Wow, so this was all during the whole Good Burger time. So you were still on the set, or you were done your audition, and y'all just exchanged numbers, and you just stuck around, and... Um, so basically... We went out a couple of times. Um, actually, no, we went We went out, yeah, we went out a couple of times. I'm gonna say we kept going out maybe for about a month, almost every day. And then, um, actually his mom called, he called me with his mom on the phone and I was like, what's happening? And he's like, oh my gosh, I have crabs. And I'm like, well, we didn't have sex. So his mom was like, I just wanted to make sure that you guys, I was like, I'm a virgin till I'm married. So, yeah, no. Hold on, hold on. Bring that crabs. You, mean, you said his mama said he, had, he told you he had crabs? Him or, and his mom were on the phone together. Were they trolling you or like who would do that? That's wild. No, no. I guess his mom wanted me to make sure that I didn't get crabs because I had spent the night at his house and been hanging out with him. But we never had sex, so. I was like, well, we, I, we didn't have sex, so. So you told me that his mother, and along with him, called you and said, "Hey, I got crabs." So what, <laughs> yes. what, that's crazy. What, she, what, did she, oh. what did she tell you? Go get checked out or something, or make sure you. Yeah, was, she was uh, like, I didn't think my son was gonna tell you that you know that he has crabs, and I know you guys have been uh, because I think his mom was out here or something, and she had noticed like we were hanging out every single day so i guess she assumed that we had had sex and i was like no so, i mean the whole conversation just caught me off guard uh, so did she she think you gave him that was well, she came from the point of view like you gave him crabs no 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 she came oh. from the point of view like she's very into um just sexual talk i guess oh, and okay. so she was just like she just wanted to make sure that i knew that he had crabs and wanted to make sure that he called me and told me this but i think from him he was like i told my mom we didn't have sex i don't even know why she called you and told you that and i was like well i mean i guess it's pretty good information to know right he wasn't yeah. turned off by the crabs i absolutely was i didn't even know what they were <laughs> i was y'all around that time 18 i literally 18. just turned 18. so we started dating when i was 17. um yeah so at this time i i think i had just turned 18. or maybe i wasn't maybe i was still 17. i probably was still 17. so how long did it take before y'all was walking down that aisle um about a year about a year and a half about a year and a half so how was y'all overall marriage like from the good times to the bad times, what, and what well, led up to you know, the divorce? So, our marriage, I want to say we had, I, you know, he was like my best friend. He was my first boyfriend. He was my first everything. So, I didn't really, like, know what to expect or how a relationship should go. But I was just like, well, I just know I'm not having sex till I get married. So, he was like, okay, well, let's get married. Um... But, you know, we were young and, you know, honestly, he was my best friend. He's my first everything, like I said. And so we did a lot of things together. We had a lot of fun. Um, the very first time that we had sex, I got pregnant. I didn't even know I was pregnant. So it just happened like everything happened kind of quick. Um, and everything actually was really well with the relationship. But there were some things that I was kind of just a little bit concerned about but when i had talked to like other friends and family they nobody really was like it was it was a big idea like for example um he started to so at the time i wasn't exactly sure what i wanted to do with my life i, I wasn't sure if i was going to do acting i really was done with i really was tired of acting so i really honestly didn't want to do that anymore i wasn't sure if i wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor so i was actually working at this law firm and there were, I was working at a black law firm with three black men who were 
I think they were ex basketball players. And yeah. so I noticed that he was like really like kind of like jealous of that. And so then he was like, hey, you know, maybe you don't have to work anymore. You know, you could just hang out with me. And so, you know, like that sounds good, right? That doesn't sound like anything terrible. It didn't, yeah, that doesn't sound like anything yeah. bad, right? It sounds like Not I'm really. trying to, right? I'm trying to take care of my wife, you know, make sure she doesn't have to work. So once I, once I quit that job, then shortly after that, I actually got into a car accident and he was like, well, don't worry about your car. Just, just once you get your car fixed, give your car to your brother and then you could just drive my car, which once again, sounds like, you know, regular everyday kind of stuff. Right. Until I started noticing that he just wanted me around him everywhere. Like I, I, I could not, not be around him if i wasn't around him then he like assumed i was cheating which is kind of like i guess like the the first kind of signs where i was like hmm this seems pretty controlling but you know it it never really sounded controlling it just always sounded like he always had the best interest at heart why would he be suspecting that you're cheating i think it's just because he was insecure mm. Yeah, I think he was insecure. I honestly feel like maybe he also just said it just to say it. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because he's such a, excuse me, he's such a narcissist. He might have just honestly just said it just to say it. So then I could, you know, from that point on say, oh my gosh, like constantly prove to him that I wasn't cheating. Mm -hmm. So there was an old interview with Kel that i seen on uh the cbn network did you see that interview it's actually oh, yeah. here on youtube oh yes i did see that and he talks about infidelity in your marriage i got drunk right and i got high for like the first time we started going through yellow pages and we went through these yellow pages we were like oh let's just call some call girls just for fun and ended up having sex with one of the girls so yes, you want to elaborate on that and the circumstances behind that sure definitely so <laughs> he actually for okay so actually let me let me back up some so everything was going well in the marriage everything was going great he actually decided that he didn't want to do Kenan and Kel anymore he didn't want to do all that he wanted to separate himself from Kenan and so once the show was over I think in his brain he thought like oh I'm gonna get all this stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna do all these things anyway that actually didn't happen and like he just started running out of money his mom was controlling the money. He was running out of money. So once the money started running out, then I'm like, well, I need to go to school. I need to do something because you, I don't know what you're doing. Like, you're just like not going to do anything. So then he would actually come with me to my classes in college. And then my professors and I, um, I got my first degree. I have a bachelor. Oh no. Okay. I don't know which Are part did I leave off at. Yeah, you back. Um, okay. You said you said get your bachelor's or something. You yes yes so i was i was at school getting my bachelor's of science and mathematics and so my instructors and everybody was like who is this guy and i'm like oh my gosh he's my husband and they're like your husband cannot come with you to school and i was like okay so uh kel enrolled in school at the same time that i went to classes so that he can come with me because he was super like getting just just more crazy more jealous because he was out of work and wasn't working and so I'm trying to remember, um, Kel started becoming very physically abusive, emotionally abusive, mentally abusive. He was, I believed he was doing drugs, but he never told me that he was. He actually started doing like going to see psychics and doing witchcraft and acting completely like crazy and insane. Um, and then what I, what, happened was that he actually contacted my family so at the same time that he was acting crazy and he was out of work for six months he told my entire family and his family that i was cheating on him that i was doing drugs that i wasn't with the kids and he created an entire smear campaign against me and my son had kind of reenacted a time where kel had like put me in a chokehold and was choking me out and he did that to our daughter and so I just knew that this relationship has to be over. Like this, this has got to stop. We have to end this. And so I never cheated on him during the marriage. He did all the cheating. He did all the drugs. He did everything, but he made it seem like I was the one. What actually happened was that 
he pl he planted this whole smear campaign against me, told my parents I was cheating, told his family I was cheating, was telling me, we're going to work on our marriage. And we were going to marriage counseling. We were reading books together. Like, I'm thinking everything is like, you know, getting back to normal. But at the same time, he was taking the kids out of school. He was secretly plotting to remove the kids from me and bring them to his mom's house in Chicago. And I had no clue, like I had no idea. Well, around that same time um, when the kids were, so his mom came out and, you know, she was like, okay, I wanna come, you know, visit with the kids. And the plan was for them to stay in Chicago for a week or two. And then when he, Kel was done filming the movie, he would come back. Well, what, ended up on, what movie was this that he was filming at the time? He was filming Bones. I don't know if oh, you're familiar Bones. with Bones. Yeah. Okay. And so actually before he filmed Bones, I had gotten a 97% royalty deal after, cause I created Ganked. And so I had written Ganked and I had gotten a $10 million deal to produce a million dollar movie every single year for the next 10 years. At the time, Kel was like, I don't wanna be on Blockbuster. I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do that. And so Kel was acting really strange. So I started looking through his things. And I started actually like paying attention to like where he was going and kind of what he was doing. I started checking the phone bills. And so that's when I noticed in a bank statement that he had been paying for someone else's um, apartment. It was actually a condo, but he'd been paying for to, you know someone else's rent. And so I went there and I figured out it was some stripper girl. She was like, oh my, she knew who I was. She knew who he was. And I completely snapped. I was just like, I couldn't even, I, I could not, I just was like in shock. In so shock. he had a whole other apartment he was paying for, for a stripper girl. Yes. Yes. From my, from my money and my parents' money. Like he didn't even have any money at that time. Um, so from the money that I had for my inheritance, the money that I had saved and he'd never written a check in his life while we were together, but like, he's writing this like scribble scrabble check to this other place. And I went there, talked to her, found out, had, you know, concrete evidence. And this is the, these are the things that I kept asking him. He would come home with hickeys. He would just do all sorts of stuff. And so um, I actually had stopped having sex with him. And, you know, then he tried to use that. Well, you're not like, okay, well, you're cheating. I mean, he slept with our publicist. Like at the time I was 20, our publicist was like 43 and she was ugly and fat. And he slept with her. I'm like, like, he just slept with everybody. Like so many people he was having sex with. And so I was like, you know, that's not safe. So I, I stopped having sex with him. But then when I had found out that um, the $10 million deal, he decided to pass up and to get the movie Bones that they paid him $60,000. I was just like, this man is ridiculous. And then the stripper girl told me, she's like, I told him, I told him that he doesn't need to be in that kind of movie. He doesn't need to be in, in Blockbuster. You know, this is when Blockbuster came out, but I already knew because my background was in science and computer, my minor was computer science. So I knew that we were moving towards, you know, Netflix and streaming. So I'm like, this is like a perfect opportunity, like right, right when Netflix and everything got started. And so once I uh, talked to the woman and I had gotten proof of everything that Kel had been doing, well, then I told my family. I told my entire family what was going on. But he had already told everybody that I was cheating on him, that I was using drugs. And he, at the same time that he was telling my family that, he was actually isolating me from my family. So my family didn't even talk to me. He was like, oh, your family doesn't like you anymore. They're tired of you asking for money. They're tired of you, you know, um, just coming to them with everything. I'm your husband. I should be here for you. But mm -hmm. instead, he was doing the complete opposite. Sorry, of complete everything against me. So I actually never cheated on him. He was the one that did all the, che oh, the cheating. Okay, because on that um, CBN network, uh, that interview that he did, he he actually said that he was uh, he called the call girl or Vegas prostitute or something, and he did that. He did the deed with with, with that prostitute one night and then he he told you about it or something so is that the same stripper girl that he was paying for the, or this was someone else oh no, completely no, no. different this, situation yeah this is this was his regular thing like he'd always be um i don't know i have a gift so i always like i could just tell i don't know like, when, intuition gift whatever you call it but i could tell when like energy was off or energy was different so there were so many times that i actually caught him in lies about prostitutes 
And it was so crazy because he was so happy I was a virgin and I hadn't been with anybody. But yet and still, he, you know, like. Well, was... well, he also mentioned that you cheated on him and then you got an abortion with your first child. And another guy called him and told him that he was with you and that child that you aborted wasn't your wasn't his child she said that you know that abortion that we had was actually from another man it wasn't yours so at that moment you, you it was just like okay now i'm i'm married to this person and literally through that marriage we went through a lot because it was literally like okay you know we went into it with all these lies and deception, you know, and hurt and pain. Do you really love this person? Do this person loves, loves you? Did you take the time to even find out who that was? Kel decided to stay with his wife. They had two kids together, but Kel's wife continued to be unfaithful. Yeah, Kel has an active imagination and he just made up that entire amount just to get sympathy so that uh, people would like him. So you said none of that was true. That well, he said none of it was true. So you none never, even, so you never aborted your first child. I I don't even believe in abortion. I mean, I believe in the right to abortion, but I've never uh -huh. had an abortion. I would never abort my child. No, never. Wow. So you saying he made that whole entire story up? Absolutely. He, you know, um, I don't know if you've ever dealt with a narcissist, but he's kind of like what i call like a good guy narcissist so he always has to be the good guy so i'm sure he was using that whole i'm the bad guy person to justify everything that he was planning on doing to me and the kids so uh so those that's been following your TikTok and your social medias they know you've been fighting for uh for years to get this 1.2 million dollars do i got that right 1.2 well, million you know dollars what? from cal for ever since he's been active support. Yeah, support. ever since he's been acting funny, I decided, you know, let me just add the interest. Let me just, it's up to about three and a half million now because now you're making me do all kind of extra stuff that I wasn't even trying to do. So um, right now it's at about three and a half million. He still has not paid me anything for Ganked, which we get 97% royalties. Also, I wrote and produced Kel Videos Live. I have never received not one check. So not only was he not paying any child support, any spousal support, anything besides making my life hell, he was also taking the money that came in from all of my ideas. And he still, to this day, 2022, he still hasn't paid me a dime for that. So I'm sure that's probably going to be another at least million or two. Hmm. Dang. So did you, so you, I remember you saying something about he's stealing a script from you that was worth 50 or 60,000. Did you elaborate Definitely. on that? Yeah, sure. Well, it, actually, that script was worth a million. So Ganked had a okay. had a sequel. So once we finished Ganked and we filmed Ganked and I was able to sell Ganked to um, the production studio, they said, hey, you want to have a you, we're going to do a $10 million deal with you guys. And so I'm all on board. We're literally like at the meeting, like sitting in the meeting, getting ready to sign it. You know, 97 percent royalties like that's insane. And Kel's in the meeting is just like, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. And I'm thinking like, what the hell? Because I literally had just borrowed like 40000 or something from my parents like that week. And he's sitting in the meeting like, I don't want to, I don't, I don't think I want to do this. And so from the movie that he was in, it's called, I think that he, he titled it Dance Foo. That was actually the sequel to Ganked. I had written Ganked and then I had also written Dance Foo. Well, we, it was not called Dance Foo. It was actually called Ganked. Gangster. Well, you also uh, stated in a previous interview you did on YouTube with uh, Tax T Tammy that you got in trouble with the IRS in the LA County for back taxes and stealing a whole house that you said Kel illegally purchased. You Absolutely. also said you was incarcerated for felony fraud. Can you Absolutely. explain that situation to us? And sure, have you sure, have definitely. you resolved those legal issues? Sure, sure, yeah. So Kel had lied on his tax return stating that he made, I don't know, maybe like $20,000, right? But the IRS does not care about you lying, you know, in order to not pay child support. That That's what mm -hmm. I believe his whole purpose of lying was, you know, so that he wouldn't have to pay child support. And so the IRS caught up to him and they're like, dude, you said you made 20,000, but uh, you made like closer to like $600,000. And 
what do you think the IRS does? They're like, uh, no, you owe us two hundred thousand. It was like two hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars. Oh, before you go on, before you go on, you said he made six hundred thousand. He he yes, he made six hundred. So so what so what did he make that off of? Because you said he didn't want to work and he went through a phase where he was broke. So what year was this that he made the six hundred thousand? And sure, what well, projects he, was he doing? Sure, he was on like one on one. He was doing a, a lot of guest Star Wars. I think he was on. Uh, the Parkers, he was... Oh, will someone by that please call the fashion police and arrest Humpty and Dumpty? They are abusing that denim. Just doing, like, a whole bunch of different guest star roles where he would do, like, okay. eight... Yeah, like, eight episodes or so. And then he'd also done, like, a KFC commercial, so he... You want to know the secret recipe? Take a little. He was actually working. Just... Maybe it wasn't in the capacity that people are used to seeing him, but yeah, no, he he was actually working and making money at this time. Okay, well, you can go ahead and continue about the IRS stuff and the yeah, house so and all that. sure. So the so the IRS put a lien against the house. Well, at the time, I'm fighting for the house, and I wasn't even worried about the lien because I'm thinking like, well, what do I have to like? What? Why do I? Why am I even worried about the lien? So my plan was actually to put what's called an innocent spouse because at the time, we were separated, and I had no. When he made that six hundred thousand, I did, had no clue. He wasn't giving me it. I didn't receive it. I, nothing happened to it. So there was a lien on the house for two hundred thousand. Well, when Kel, I came to the set of one on one actually. And by this time, Kel had moved in with the stripper girl and Kel was MIA, called his parents. His parents are hanging up on the phone on me. They're not talking to me. So I called his parents just every single hour for like two days in a row. And finally his mom answers and she's like, oh, it's you B. I have the kids. You're never getting the kids back until, until you, until you, um, until you, until my son tells me that you could actually have the kids. And so I said, forget that, got on a plane to Chicago, called the police, called my family members um, and went to Chicago and got my kids, brought my kids back. Well, I guess that started Kel like on acting completely psych, even more psycho than he, he ordinarily was. And he decided instead of, because what was supposed to happen was that I was supposed to give Kel money for his portion of the house and then I was going to keep the house. But instead of doing that, he goes and sells the house to the in-house mortgage broker for Caldwell Banker. His name is Stephen Kenilworth. And with the help of the mortgage person who sold me the house, and actually we bought the house as two separate people because we weren't legally married. So the house was actually purchased in my name and his name separately. Right. And so um, the mortgage person that actually sold me the house is the same person who helped my ex-husband steal the house from me while myself and the kids were actually in the house wow and so because he did that i had to go through and i'm you know i let's see about it almost a 12-year trial and i'm actually still going through this trial with this house but about a 12-year trial with this house three different trials because he decided to sell the house well when at the time that he sold the house, there wasn't an actually the lien wasn't even on there yet because the lien didn't get added until after he had sold the house. So it looked like to the IRS that the house was sold and then like like that I had something to do with it. So I'm calling the IRS. I'm like, that's not I have nothing to do at all with it, this at all. So anyway, so I go through three trials and it turns out the judge and everybody agrees and says, yes, this house is community property. Her name was on the title. They had lied and said that I had signed over my rights, which is a complete lie. I never signed over my rights, never signed a quit claim deed. The person who said that they had a copy of the quit claim deed, that person all of a sudden lost the quit claim deed copy, which would have my fingerprint and ID a week before her deposition, before trial, right? So the judge just was like, okay, no, she gets the house. I actually win the house. But by the time I won the house, the house had a $200,000 lean against it from the irs so unfortunately the person that he sold the house to was this real estate mogul and he had very high ties in the criminal justice system and had ties with the courts so his best friend actually worked at the criminal courts so literally after i spent 
over a million dollars in attorney's fees. And after three trials and we get the family law case judgment and it says that I got the house back as my sole and separate property. Instead, about maybe, I want to say less than a month later, I was arrested for grand theft of house. Dang. Wow. So why did they just come after you and not him when both of your names was on it? And he, it was it should be records well, of him selling the house. Right. Well, by this time, so we purchased the house for 300000 At the time that Kel sold the house, the house was worth $1.2 million. By this time that I won the house, the house was worth closer to four or five million dollars. So did you so, win the house before he sold it or after? After I was kind of confusing. Yeah, so 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 Kel sold the house after I went and got the kids. I guess he was mad and so he sold the house. Now, throughout the divorce process, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to sell the house. He didn't even tell anybody he sold the house, he just sold it. And so the house was sold, but I had to spend 12 years undoing the sale because unfortunately in the state of California, if the person has a lot of money, which this man did, they can literally take you to court for anything, even though um, it says in all the documents that this is a divorce, wife won't allow us to enter the house, wife has control of the house, um, you know, palm colored people, they just do what they want to do, especially when there's money involved. So this man said that you stole the house. Is that why they came after you? Yeah, the man said that I stole the house. That I was it was grand theft of house. Was and you living in it? Was you living he, in it at the time? Yeah, not only was I was, what was I living in, I just won it after like a three week long trial. Mm. So he felt I, the uh the guy yeah, that bought the house I, felt like you was basically like just living on his property. Yeah. Right, yeah. He was like, so then so 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 what happened was he got the guy got so angry that it actually won right he, the white man was like there's no way now the house is worth close to five million right he's like he bought the house for seven hundred sixty five thousand. it's all that was just all free money for him right so instead of conceding and being like you know i lost and going after kel which is what he really should have done because kel was the one that sold him the house improperly and in my divorce proceeding, it says that Kel committed fraud with malicious intent. So Kel is the one at fault because he should have never have sold the man the property. That's why I was asking. So why would they come after you if he sold the property and it was supposed to be yours that you wanted to divorce? How would he be able to sell your property and they not come after him? Instead, why would they come after you? Right. Well, right. they well. So what happened was that they came after me because I'm the one that got the house. So in the divorce, Kel ended up losing. He didn't get the house anymore. So the only person that they could go after would be me because I have full use, ownership, and possession of the house. So even though the guy lost in family law court, he put me in jail because when you're in jail, because I've never been to jail, never had a ticket, never been arrested, never had any issues with the law. So you're saying the man put you in jail? The man who purchased the house after I won it in the lawsuit, had a full trial, three week long trial, spent a million dollars in a turn. Actually, we didn't, I only not just didn't have one trial. I had three trials, three trials. And I won the house back. So the man decided to, the white man decided to, Stephen Kennevort, called up his buddy at the Pasadena Police Department, put out a warrant for my arrest and said that I stole the house. The man decided to, the white man decided to, Stephen Kennevort, called up his buddy at the Pasadena Police Department, put out a warrant for my arrest, and said that I stole the house. Yeah, but he has just baseless claims. If you actually won the house right. or during a divorce, then that means you have papers saying that the house is yours. Which so I did. It, would be, it would be illegal for Kel to sell the house. Because yeah. if it's your house that you won in a divorce, Kel, Kel, how could Kel they arrest already, you for that? Kel had already sold the house. So Kel had already That's sold the, the house to the white that man. I'm making. Yeah, they should have went after him, not you. That don't make sense. Well, 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 I don't know. Who do you mean? Who who should have? Whoever went after you for having the, the house. The, 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 guy, the, the house. guy who purchased the house at this time had a windfall of like four and a half million dollars. So if I had the house and I lost and he lost in family court, Kel doesn't have the house. I'm in the house. Then he pulled a trump card you know and went to his buddies and was like arrest this girl so then you know because it was like let me tell you explain to you exactly how they arrested me so they arrested me and said i had a warrant out for my arrest 
And when I went to jail, they said I wasn't a citizen of the United States of America, which is this is what they could do. So I don't know if, you know, hopefully are you, you guys are, are you listening. from America. Are you you're from California, right? Yeah, I'm like a fifth generation Pasadenian. I'm born and raised in the uh, United States. How, how were they able to do that? Because that sounds very uh, that sounds very uh, crazy and corrupt. And very sound corrupt. Like it, it sounds like it would be easy for you to fight that. Not at all, unfortunately. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about the straw man and about how your birth certificate ties to uh, this is all this stuff I didn't know at the time. Um, yeah. So anybody and these are just this is like the district attorney is actually the best friend of the person who put me in jail. That shouldn't even happen, right? Like that yeah, should have never happened. Yeah, because he sold your house. If no, you no, wanted he, in he, divorce he, court, he bought he my house him. from Kel. That's and what I'm saying. I, I was talking about Kel. So your house to this man. Right. That that's illegal right there. If you won that house, how would he be able to sell Child your man. house? He, he didn't. That you he, won a I, divorce. I don't think I don't think you're understanding. So Kel sold the house in like 2006. By the time I got the house back, it was 2010. Okay. So Kel sold the house in 2006, and the judge said Kel wasn't supposed to sell the house. So then I got the house. So I won the house after three trials. And so instead of the man saying I lost and moving on with his life, instead he called his buddy, who's a district attorney, and said, I'm going to put a lawsuit against this black girl. She doesn't have any money. You know, she has no means to do anything. And she stole my house. So this no is because he, uh, he would be out of money. He would be out of the money because, you know, you won the yes, house he, back. He would, he and he already, of, yeah, that, that's the, whatever he bought the house for, he would have, that, that's a loss he wasn't that, willing to take. That house shouldn't even have been part of the divorce if it was already sold about time y'all went to court. No, that's no, no. Right. So, so Kel filed divorce in 2006. Yeah. So, Ke, so Kel so filed divorce. The house in, he also sold the house in 2006. Right, right, right. So, so like two months after Kel filed the divorce, he also sold the house to this man. In 2006. So from 2006 to about 2010, I won the house back. And then it actually, even after that, 2010, the man who purchased the house took me to appellate court to appeal the decision. So, so after there was no public record that this man had bought. Like when the court allowed the, the, the house to even be a part of the divorce, there was no public record that Kel had sold the house? Yes, there was public record. Yeah, The man knew that Kel sold the house. No, but I'm saying the judge, the lawyers, no what, one in the there criminal knew. Court? No, no, I'm talking about during your divorce, like all the stuff during, like the lawyers that was involved in your divorce, all of that. No the one knew that, that the house was. No one knew that the house that were, was sold already. Yeah, the lawyers that were involved in my case, they're the ones who helped me to get the house back. They're the ones that represented me for the three trials and for the appellate case where the okay. guy tried to undo it. So they, everybody was involved. We actually gotcha. thought everything was completely over. Like it was like, I was like, yes, finally I won. I thought my life was going to get back, you know, normal. And instead of that happening, the guy calls his, Stephen Kennelbort calls his buddy and says, hey, um, this person stole the house. And that's honestly all he needed to say. All he needed to say was this girl stole the house to his buddy. His buddy well, he, filed he a lawsuit. He must have been a very powerful man. To pull oh, yeah. That's why I said because, he's... Yeah, the judge already awarded you the house. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, the judge. Right. Right. judge. Right. For him to be able to get you in jail, that's a very powerful person. Very powerful. Very powerful. So he puts me in jail, right? So while I'm in jail, this is something that, you know, I hope, I hope nobody ever has to go through this. But if you're listening, when a judge puts you in jail, you can't go to any court. So... So what he did was he basically put me in jail, said I wasn't a citizen. So by this time, the house was worth uh, closer to five million. But when you're not a citizen or they claim that you're not a citizen of the United States of America, it's not easy. It's not like you just show them your birth certificate. You just show them your social security card. You actually have to get your birth certificate authenticated. And that process takes about six months to a year to get your birth certificate authenticated. So even though you have a birth certificate, it's really not a birth certificate. It's your birth certificate isn't a true legal document until it's actually authenticated. Yeah, that's wow. an immigrant. So Dan, what they had you on immigration? 
Right. They, they had me basically saying that I wasn't a citizen who had not com who had committed a crime. So if you're not a citizen of the United States of America and you could you commit a crime of what's called grand theft, you no longer get out of jail um, on your own recognizance. You yeah. actually have to pay three times the amount of the bail in all cash. You can't put up property. You can't do anything. So, so where, the guy where knew how did they say you were from if you wasn't from America? They, they never had to say. They never had to say. Wow. Yeah. That is yeah. some crazy shit. That's crazy yeah. as hell. Yeah. I mean, they don't they don't have to say. Like, this is what white people have been, you know, doing the whole entire time. I'm, I don't know. You know, once I started getting my story out, I just kept hearing stories and stories. And this man buys 40, 50 properties all, all the time. Like, 40, 50 properties a month. All over the United States, this man has been doing this. And he was a real estate broker, you know, like the whole, like everything about it was completely fraudulent. And these kinds of people get away with this for their, I mean, he's still, he's free. Nothing happened to him. So, so while I'm in jail and when you're, if you, if you are in a family law case, right. And you go to jail, the only case that you can attend is family law case. You cannot go to civil court. So while I'm literally sitting in jail, he goes into civil court and wins the house back without a trial why does he win the house back in civil court because guess what i'm in jail and i can't do anything i have to sit there in jail i can't even respond i can't do anything when you're in jail you lose all your rights you, you can't respond to any sort of civil lawsuit not even with an attorney dang yeah, he called wow. him, he called immigration on you that's what yeah, it's so, called immigration. So, well, it's not really it's not really immigration. I honestly it's like anybody who doesn't have an authenticated birth certificate at any point in time, mm -hmm. a judge, somebody that's in your case, a district attorney can all they have to say is this person's not a citizen. And then it's up to hey. your side to prove that you are. But in order to prove that, you have to get an authenticated birth certificate. Mm -hmm. So they and were just it, sitting back scheming and finding some type of angle to basically steal the house back. Absolutely, yeah, but I'm sure they do. You know, this is obviously something that they've been doing, right? Because, you know, who in the hell thinks of this on like a humbug? Because yeah, that's that's some elaborate yeah, he, shit yeah, right he, there. If he's a uh, real estate broker, then yeah, he knows the gray, gray areas. Oh, he does. He does. He lawyered, he, you know he lawyered up. So was yeah, Cal yeah, so in on any of this? Or do he know, did he know this guy honestly, personally? Or... I'm, honestly, I don't know. I'm certain that Kel must have gotten some kind of kickback. They must have had some kind of deal because why in the hell wouldn't you sue Kel for the money, right? That's, why what, that's you the sue... question I was asking from the beginning. Yeah, why Why wouldn't he sue Kel? Okay, yes, he lost the house. I won the house. But why wouldn't you sue Kel for the money? Well, mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you a couple of reasons. Kel wouldn't have no $5 million cash at hand. That's Hell number yeah. one. Kel was already owed me all this money in back child support, back spousal support. So Kel was was exited. He was out. So I'm the only person now that had the tangible asset, which was the house. And he knew that I would have like run out of money because I had already spent my entire my entire inheritance, my entire savings on fighting for this house. So the guy knew that I was basically had like run out of funds and his solution was to put me in jail. So I was in jail for 30 days and my attorney went to some kind of like, you know, attorneys. Anyway, my attorney was Garagos and Garagos. He's a very famous attorney. And he knew the person that um, purchased the house named Stephen Kenilworth. And Garagos and Garagos told me they're like, oh man, this man has like ties. He knows everybody. He knows the district attorney. So my case, in order to protect myself, in order to get actually some sort of a fair advantage, right? Because the judge didn't have to do that. The judge could have said, she says she's a citizen because the judge asked me in court, are you a citizen? Absolutely. Like I could go get my birth certificate, I could go get, you know, my social security card. Um, and so the judge could have done that, but because the judge knew, like every single person that worked in the criminal courts for California or for Los Angeles County knew that Kenilworth was friends with the head of the entire criminal courts. So they knew that I wasn't going to get a fair trial. They knew that like, you know, nothing was going to happen there. So they actually had to move my entire case to Orange County to be heard. I mean, this is how like deep this 
whole yeah, entire that's how world. California is. Yeah, they all golf buddies and yeah. So have thank not, not clubs and shit. You know what I'm yeah. Saying? So thank thank God my attorney was like had just noticed that you know had made the co- the connection, and instead of having the case get dropped though, he he moved it to a different county. I'm still like you know honestly I I'm really not certain about all these attorneys and you know. Everybody's really just out to get money, especially from people that look like me and you guys. Okay. Any way that they can, you know, they are stealing houses. They're doing whatever they can. So mm-hmm. while I was in jail fighting for my case, he goes into civil court and he wins the house back. Right. So in 30 days, like in, like like I spent, I don't even know, seven to 10 years fighting for this house. After three trials, I won the house. He goes to civil court and in 30 days wins the house. So how long were you in prison? Uh, well, I wasn't in prison. I was actually in county jail. You were just in county jail. Yeah, I was in so county. They had jail. you run there for a couple of days. Um, they had me in there for three months in total. Three months. Okay. Oh dang! Wow. Three months. Three months, and uh, honestly, it was really like you know, so many things happened for different reasons. But I literally found myself like from the age of eighteen, I was a, a wife and. I was a mom and I had like no time at all for myself. And I wasn't like, I don't know. These new moms are different. New moms are different. I was cooking. I was the only one cooking. I was the only one cleaning, the only one going to the store, the only one washing all the kids, taking them to school, the only one teaching my kids. I breastfed each of my kids until they were three years old. Um, Like I did, I did everything. I even did Kel's hair too. Like pick, like iron his clothes, like, so I was like a serious like mom. And then while I was doing all that, I wrote Ganked, wrote Kelby Deals Live, got a ma- got a degree in math, like superwoman status, okay? And <laughs> so when I had gone to jail, it was the very first time in my life where I actually could just chill out. Like I was like, wow, so you saying jail was like vacation? Yeah, it was like. So, so how how old were your kids when you went in for those three months, and where did they go? Were they with Kel or? No, my mom. They actually went with my mother because Kel, when he sold the house and did all of that, Kel was MIA. He did not see the kids. He did not talk to the kids for almost about seven years. So how Dang. old were the kids when you went into prison? Um, you know what? I'm not really certain about the ages, but this was in 2015. So. Okay. Yeah, they were in. I know my daughter was in the tenth grade, so my son was probably a senior. So it was around fourteen, fifteen, or sixteen, around those ages. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that had to have been a traumatic experience. Oh so- man, yeah, it was. It was. It was horrible. Then you know, my mom was trying to bring them to jail, and I'm just like, and then how do you explain that to your kid? It, well, how do you explain it to anybody? When I was in jail, and it, this is a crazy story, but I don't know if people know this either, so. In the jail, and I'm not sure if this is for all jails, but um, in the jail, the county jail in California, when I first went to jail, I was with, um, I would say maybe like 60% black and maybe like 40% Hispanic. And then after about a month, they were like trying to get me to like, um, I don't know, be this, uh, some kind of person that tells on other people. I'm like, dude, we're all in jail. So like, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not not doing any of that. I'm just going to chill. And so anyway, so they're like, well, we're going to move you to this better, this better unit. And so when I was in that first jail part, like I said, I was 60% black, 40% Hispanic. We were literally in our cells 23 hours out of the day. And we only got to leave out of our cells for an hour, 30 minutes for like breakfast, 30 minutes for shower and dinner. And that was it. Well, then I get moved to this other jail and I learned how to twerk. Like we had hip hop classes. I learned how to paint. We were, n- I was never in my cell, played dominoes, watched all the, the new movies. Um, actually I was teaching at the time. So I actually taught all these women how to do math. And like, so a completely different part of the jail, like they even have jail segregated. So the new part of the jail that I went to was maybe 5% black, 5% Hispanic and the rest white. Hey. Wow, that sounds like you went to a resort. Right? In the same jail. Literally, like, walked, like, 200 yards down the hallway. The exact same jail. Dang. 
wow, that that's gonna make some people be like they want to go to jail. Well, man, well, I mean, just to get a vacation. (laughs) Honestly, it's the only place where everything is free, right? I never had, you know, like I like I said, I never had to wash clothes, I never had to cook anything, I never had to pay a bill, I didn't have to do anything. I could just sleep. So did your children resent uh, Kel for not getting them when you went, went to prison or well, or they just it, didn't care at that point? It, it was it was kind of it was kind of difficult for the kids because honestly, before that time, my son. So Kel had this whole issue with color and colorism. And my son is a lot lighter than him. Actually, my son was lighter than both of us. Um, but his mom is lighter you know, my mom's like, we got, you know, black people got all different because we have that Eve gene. So a lot of different colors in our family. But anyway, the last time that Kel had picked up his son and his daughter, and the only time that he ever took them to any sort of doctor was when he gave them a paternity test as if I cheated on him, right? It was just insane. I was a virgin when we got married, but somehow, somehow, in his brain, he decided that he needed to get a paternity test. And so he had gotten a paternity test when my son was five years old and my daughter was three. So from the time that my son and daughter were three and five years old, um, he got a paternity test. The paternity test proved that he was the father. He never told them that, right? So the entire time that he didn't see them for like seven years, my son thought that he was, that Kel wasn't his dad. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Kel did mention something about that. He thought that uh-huh. your, your first child that you aborted or whatever, whatever wasn't his child. And a whole nother nigga came up to him and said, uh, yeah, me and, <laughs> me and your wife are, are, are close and we love each other and some shit like that. He basically told me that, look, man, she's, you know, she's pregnant, you know, we're tired of this, you know, she's, I want to be with her, this is what's going on. And I remember going up to the uh, top of the hotel and literally was like just about to, to jump because of the fact that I wanted to press an off switch. I felt like there needed to be an off switch, like, you know, this wasn't what I had expected for my life and I literally wanted just to, to end at that point. I literally did. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh yeah, no, no, I I remember, I remember, you, you I remember. Seen, you seen it, right? You, you heard oh, it. Oh yeah, no, I oh, saw okay. it. I remember. Okay. Yeah, I remember just going to myself like, this is got to be the craziest thing. But at that time, I already knew that this was something that he was doing because my sister told me she was she was like, Kel had been talking to us for like six months, telling us you were on drugs, telling us that you weren't around the kids, telling us that you'd leave and not come back for weeks at a time all lies i was at home getting abused by kel he was giving me black eyes so i couldn't come around my family because i was abused and it was embarrassing like how do you have this little nickelodeon guy hitting you so when did that that start like when did he started like getting aggressive and did he do this in front of the kids and like oh yeah did you elaborate more on that sure yeah it's it started when i when i just i was fed up I, i was tired i was sick of him like not doing anything he's crying all the time he's like he didn't want to do the 10 million dollar deal so we'd have money but then you go fly to canada for sixty thousand. like it just wasn't making any sense he was taking apart tables and stuff i think i'm sure he was doing meth or some kind of i don't know what kind of drugs he was using um and so before i had decided to just allow him to be his crazy self and not question it when he'd come home with hickeys on his neck and tell me that he fell down i just was like okay and he'd come home and there'd be condoms and stuff in the car and he'd tell me his homeboy was in the car and it was his condoms all right or he didn't come home and would tell me he was at his friend's house all right so i did so during that time that all this was going on and he was you know just being crazy i just didn't say anything i just was still the good wife like Yes. Okay. All right. You know. Okay. Like. Okay. Whatever. Um, I never expected time? him not to cheat. It was just like yeah. how he was doing it. Do you remember a specific time that he like got really violent that you just can't forget and like? Oh man. So the time when I I actually called the police. So, um, 
my one of my good friends my sister's really my sister's best friend's husband had passed away and like literally passed away she had five children and she had four of them under like under four i think right so i was always good with kids and she was stressed out and she had twins she's breastfeeding both kids and, and has like a toddler and like a five-year-old so she asked me if i can come over to give her a break and so every single night i read my kids bible stories and we would pray we have a routine i'd give them a bath um i read them a bible i read them a story and then we'd pray and i'd read them a bible verse or i'd teach them a bible verse every night did the same thing well this night i told kel i said hey you know what um her name was tasha i'm like tasha's husband passed away and um you know we're all gonna go over there and pray for her because you know this is a very difficult time oh my gosh I just out of the blue, your husband passes away and you got five kids. So Kel was like, no, you're not. You're going to go cheat. And I'm like, what? Yeah, you're going to go cheat on me. That's what you're going to do. I'm like, no, I'm going to go. And at this time, I was like, I'm done playing this game with him. Um, Tasha needs me. And that's where I'm going. Like, I'm done playing these games. It, it didn't even work. Like, me playing the games didn't help anything. It just, just continued to get worse. He continued to get more violent. So this day he actually threw a brick through the windshield of his car that I was driving while I was in the driveway. So I'm sorry, let me back up some. Before he did that, while I'm reading the kids a bedtime story, he takes his arm, puts it around my neck and starts to choke me out in front of my kids. Wow. So I actually bit his hand, ran out the house with no shoes, no nothing. Only thing I had was my cell phone. My cell phone was like, I don't even know, like 1%. So I run out the house, I get in the, in the, I grab his keys, I get in the truck and he throws three bricks through the windshield of the car while I'm sitting in the car. Dang. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is insane. So I'm calling 911, but as I'm calling 911, the phone hangs up and um, I ended up going to a gas station using a payphone. So I go to the gas station, I use a payphone. The police are like, oh, just come back. By the way, never do this, never do this just come back we want to talk to you about what happened so i already knew that he had decided that he was going to go film the movie in canada and so i knew that if he went to jail or had any kind of you know issue on his record then he could not go film the movie in canada so when the police got there they said well he has a bite on his hand i say yes because he was choking me and they're like well it's up to you and the 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 woman officer that came, even though she was pregnant with twins, she was a fan of Kel's. And so by the time I got there, Kel, am I able to curse on here or not? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can curse. Um, you know, Kel's little bitch ass. Like, this is just what these bitch ass men do. Okay, so even though Kel started all this, even though he was the one that had the issue and had the problems in his fake land about this cheating thing, even though, even despite all that, He's choking me out. I bit his hand. This guy is literally sitting with the police officer, holding his hand like he's fucking hurt. Like he's fucking the one that I attacked him. And so I'm talking to the, and this is the, my first time even having like to call the police, like to do any of this. So I'm talking with the police officer and she's like, well, I don't see any bruises on your neck. I'm like, well, I'm black. I, got, I My bruises don't come for like two or three days. Like, I don't know. You guys have ever gotten bruised but like because we're black you don't get i don't know i don't know if this is just me or if this is an all black person thing but like you're not going to see no red marks on my neck until like two three four days later where the bruises actually come in so she was like but he has a bite on his hand so that means that you were the aggressor because his bite was more prevalent so she said we have two options both of you guys could go to jail or one of you so I just said, okay, well, I guess that, guess I'm going to jail now too. So that was the first time I went to jail over Kel. Um, oh, took, and think, took, oh, oh, so they the took you to jail. You took the charge. They took you to jail. Yeah, I took the charge. I took, wow. I, yeah, I took the charge and I, and you know, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And that's so because I, he had a he had a fan there. That one of the police officers was. He a had fan. a police officer that was a fan. She was pregnant and a woman. And I'm telling her, like, there has been domestic violence. Like this man has been choking me. He has been I'm I'm like finally I finally feel like I could be free and I could tell people what's happening. And 
they arrest me. So I was like, wow, this is insane because she knew that Kel, she loved a good burger. So, you know, <laughs> you good I go to Kel. So, God, yes. And so let me tell you, so then, so my parents actually bailed me out of jail and I called Kel. Kel's like, bitch, go to the county, bitch, go to the county. So I'm like, this thing is, he's really lost his fucking mind. So, so, um, I was going to call my mom back to pick me up from jail, but instead I literally walked like seven miles, seven or eight miles from jail to my house. And thank God I did because he would not be here, okay? He would not be here. It's hard to even imagine this. The man, you know, because I grew up watching this shit, like Good Burger and all. I could not imagine him acting crazy like that, you know, after playing Ed and shit. You know oh, mean? yeah. Was- doobity, doobity, doobity. Good burger. <laughs> Y'all, I can't even imagine him yeah. and throwing bricks and shit at the window. That's crazy, man. That's, oh, man. That's man, wild. You know, that's wild. One thing I, I can't remember is that his mom, when we were dating, he has this closet in his in his town in Chicago where um, I was pregnant. And I finally had got to, like, meet his family in Chicago and went to Chicago with him. Anyway, his mom showed me this closet, and on this closet was like, I hate you, mom. Like, sick pictures with like people's heads cut off and sick Damn. shit. Like, this, like, he was fucking one of those weirdo kids that, that, that draw on the fucking weird ass shit in the closet. Like, crazy shit was in it. Like, in all black. Like, I don't know. Like, he was into some crazy stuff. Like, he was literally have like, I hate my mom. I hate my dad. Like, wish, like, had pictures of his mom and dad dead and, pictures of his sister dead and so you're saying he basically was dark he was demented oh yeah all right so let me ask you a question so you, have you ever heard about all the crazy sick shit that went on at nickelodeon have i heard about it you know like with the pedophilia and all that all that shit have i heard about it yeah i know about it have you seen any anything like have any oh of them God, been involved I... in any of that because let's hear about some of that Oh my lord! Oh my gosh! Okay. Yeah, when you come to this channel, that's the shit you gotta talk yeah, about. Let's, let's, talk, real let's shit. talk about let's it. Let's, let's talk go. about it. So let's the talk. reason why the film, the 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 TV shows and Nickelodeon shows were filmed in Florida were because Florida had no child labor laws. Mm. I mean, how this how people didn't know this? I don't know. Like, who would send their kids to a state with no child labor laws? And their child is working. Like, who does this? And these parents, like Kel's parents, were not with him. All these parents of the kids on the show, their parents were not with them. I heard they sell their kids to these people. Well, I don't don't know if they sell them. But, like, okay, so if if you, like, I have to think about Kel's mom. Like, if I had a demented kid like Kel, right, and all of a sudden he gets a chance to be away from me with his demented crazy ass, I probably would send him. Like his mom did. His mom was like, he's going to get paid to be away from me? Like, yes. So, you know, so she actually, you know, she she was cool with it. She was okay with that. But Kel told me that, like, because we would get into clubs and we were young, like 16, 17 years old, we'd, we'd be in clubs. And the people on the set in Florida made us fake IDs. And so then I started thinking, I was like, wait, 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 what? And then they were talking about orgies and they were talking about like they would people on the set would show like pornos and they'd give the us kids? alcohol. Those were kids, like young kids on that set. Yeah. These are grown ass 30 year old men and women. Showing this to the kids. Cause... 16, 17, 15, 14 year old kids. Yeah, because I mean to show all that, those were they were all kids at that time. Like oh, young yeah. kids. Yeah. Oh man, the, the 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 girls on all that. I've seen them. One girl in particular, um, and I, I'm just not I'm not gonna name who she is. But anyway, she was she was on the cast of all that. Amanda Bynes. Nope. Um, not Amanda okay. Bynes. Amanda Bynes okay. was really young. She was like nine years old, but her dad yeah. was pres- her yeah. dad was present. And her mom was pretty present. No, but but another one of the cast members was was like. Um, cleaning their cleaning dan schneider's car with a bikini on and now at this time she had been 15 16 years old there were other times they would have like parties where the parents would wouldn't be there and they'd give us alcohol and another one of the people on the cast was giving blowjobs to the producers 
Wow, you, one of the kids. And these they were kids. These wow, were all kids. kids. Hell yeah. Wow. These were all kids, okay? And so not only that, but like uh, Dan, a couple of the producers, they they I don't know if you guys have heard about with the Pizza Gate, where they always talk about yep. like cheese. Yeah. And I don't yep. know if you guys remember on the shows, like they'd always yep. talk about cheese and feet. Yeah, you're right. Cheese yeah, they had a lot of that on there. Yeah. Cheese is little girls, and they'd be doing so much with cheese. And I'd be like, what the what the hell is this cheese about? I couldn't even understand it. Cheese and feet. Like, he had a foot fetish and a little girl fetish. So, um, even when I was pregnant, they would say stuff like, can I just put your tits in my mouth? Can I just hold them there? I mean, it was just, I had to stay inside of Kel's dressing room for most of the time because I was being sexually harassed. I want to say. Oh, so they, was, they, they were turning them kids out. Definitely, definitely, wow. yeah, and and other people too, other celebrities. Wow, yeah, because you hear the you be hearing about them passing. It's true. Them around passing. Yeah, them it's around. true. It's true. Once, once, like you know, I don't know what Kel had to do in order to, you know, be on Nickelodeon. I don't know what he had to do. I can only assume it was the absolute terrible things that he had to do because. Who in the hell else would be giving you IDs and playing pornos and getting you drunk? Uh-huh. Like, why would adults do that? What would be the purpose in that? You know, he did mention how he got hooked on the drugs because Hollywood glorified the drug usage and the sex and all that stuff, especially with the kids. Yeah. He actually admitted that during oh, that. Oh, he did? He, he admitted interview. that he did because when, I, when yeah. I was with him, he, he said he didn't. He didn't do any drugs. He he only smoked weed, and uh, but I'm I'm happy that he did. I, I actually, when I think back about it, I'm sure he was using meth and cocaine. A lot of people in the industry were using drugs at that time, which is why I was so happy to finally be behind the scenes because like I was no nope, I didn't like any of that kind of stuff. Like and, that. and them drugs was given to like those that. kids. Those drugs was given to those kids by the execs and the producers. Yeah, that should be on the set. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, wow. I don't know if you heard about, like, I mean, like, uh, a lot of child actresses and actors way back in the day were all given cocaine. So uh-huh. when you, when you even I was younger and I would do, like, Skittles commercials and all these different commercials and TV shows and stuff, and I was young, maybe 19 years old, Pepsi, soda, candy, they want you just hyped up, like, yeah, like, constantly. Uh-huh. And so they would actually give uh, kids all this stuff laced with cocaine. And in wow, mm-hmm. that's definitely I, like now, Shirley, I've never heard Shirley of that. Shirley Temple, one. Shirley Temple, um, the person who played in uh, what movie is that? Wizard of Oz. She, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So there's yeah. I mean, every and everybody knew this. Like everybody knows in Hollywood who the Hollywood pedophiles are, and they Elijah Woods shocking allegations against the entertainment industry. In a new interview with the Sunday Times, the former child star alleges that pedophilia has been a real issue in Hollywood. He tells the publication, quote, there are a lot of vipers in this industry, people who only have their own interests in mind. What bums me about these situations is that the victims can't speak as loudly as the people in power. And they continue, and they continue to give them shows, and they continue to have them in shows, which is why I was so protective of my kids, and I didn't want them in that environment because I feel that once, you know, Kel had no protection, like he just had no like understanding of how to protect his children. Um, and I wasn't even sure if he would even sell his own kids. Yeah, because they tell you if you if most of the people you see on TV that been on there for a while, they got to go through the Hollywood rituals. Absolutely. They have to go through the rituals or if you ain't going to be yeah. on TV. Yeah, yeah, if you're young, thank God my aunt was my manager and she was my agent and she kept me kind of away. But I was still, I was still proposition all kind, all the times. What type of propositions <laughs> did they like offer? Like, like I'll put you in a movie if you suck my dick. I will wow. put you in a movie if you take your clothes off and dance for me. I will wow. keep you on a TV show if you do this. And they don't only do that with the girls; they do that with the boys too. Absolutely. These, these guys. So do you believe Kel was uh, a victim of that? Absolutely. And Keenan? I mean, they was on there for a long I, ass I, time. I, I, I can't speak for Keenan because I feel that Keenan's mom was present and Keenan was in the business for a while. Yeah. So I don't know. Wow. But I will say that there were a lot of 
a lot of claims, a lot of claims, not with Keenan, but there were a lot of claims of other celebrities in that time frame, that time era that had claimed that they were molested by people in Hollywood. Yeah, and all, yeah, the Corey Feldman's. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, all them guys. Yeah, all Corey, Heim, Corey Feldman. Corey what I'm proposing is a plan that I believe can literally change the entertainment system as we know it. And I believe that I can also bring down potentially a pedophile ring that I've been aware of since I was a child. Yes, yes, that's that is so true. Yes, that is true. That is true. I think I had met them separately, and each of them were so they were all screwed up. And, and it's crazy because they say that Nickelodeon and Disney is like the biggest offenders of this. Like, oh yeah, they're the major human trafficking operation all types oh, yeah with right, I mean, right next to right next to disney world you know you're on the disney world set you're right over there with all the kids you know being found and um inside shipping containers and kids going missing and i don't even know how many kids go missing at disneyland i think it's like thousands and they have underground tunnel underground tunnels yeah they just busted like 14 people yeah at disney for that. definitely so there was a time that kel would when Kel when every time when Kel wouldn't have any money right or people wouldn't notice him, he would have to go to like a theme park or something or like some place to be like noticed. So he was like, "Let's go to Disneyland." So I'm like, "Okay, well I'll only go to Disneyland, Kel, if you don't like you keep a disguise on so people don't know who you are." But of course he doesn't do that, right? Of course he doesn't, because that's the whole purpose of going to Disneyland. So he takes off everything and every all the kids and it's like a swarm, like a swarm of kids. Next thing I know, I turn around, my daughter's being carried off with a Chinese lady. Wow. Hey. What? Whoa. What? Yeah, like, my daughter's like being like I look around. I, I have my son in my hand. I look. Kel had our daughter and she's being carried off with a Chinese woman. She's about maybe three years old. Wow. Hell no. Yeah. Hell no. Wow. Yeah. And Kel had no idea. Like Kel was like oblivious, like signing autographs. And I was just like, what the heck? Like he is just ha he has no like he doesn't even understand what it's like to be protected. I mean, he he hadn't then. I don't know. I feel that, you know, like for example, for the new children that he has, um, you know, as I said, karma is karma is real. So ever since he used my daughter's college fund for his own wedding to marry Asia. They have been trying to have kids. They couldn't. They could not have any kids. It wasn't until the what happened. I got into a domestic violence relationship, and my ex, new ex, called Kel and was like, "Oh, um, DCFS is involved, and your ex has been keeping the kids away." Like, I got into a domestic violence relationship, and my ex, new ex, called Kel and was like, "Oh." um dcfs is involved and your ex has been keeping the kids away like he was on some old crazy stuff as well anyway so anyway so when that happened then kel used that as an opportunity to finally like you know like 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 you know talk to his kids and and, and get to know his kids during that time and um oh my gosh what was that what was the question again what did you say well, the last question we asked was about the whole Nickelodeon and Disney thing, but oh, like okay. you went, yeah. I was like, dang, I, I can't remember where I left off at. But basically, when Kel kind of was back reintroduced into the kids' lives, um, mm -hmm. Kel would do crazy stuff like have random people watch the kids, like had some random man take my daughter to the bathroom. Like, would he would pick up the kids when um, he can use them like as a photo op? Like, so he would take them to their industry events. And I was, you know, knowing what I knew about the industry, I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, he's trying to sell my adorable kids. Like Kel was always jealous of our son Lyric because he was very adorable and cute. And I guess maybe what Kel wanted to look like. I don't really know. He was very jealous of him. Um, and I was thinking like, man, he's like trying to like ruin my child. Wow. Um, and so yeah no yeah he was so so you saying that kel was taking your kids around some of them shady characters very much so. what nickelodeon and disney mm -hmm. like those types of characters absolutely and i ain't talking about mickey mouse and goofy neither right? no we're talking about some of the known pedophiles known pedophiles and even my daughter like wow. you know, recently like um, i can't remember but anyway my daughter was in a picture and i was like oh my gosh what's 
isn't this the same person that dated Kylie Jenner? Like, dang. My daughter was 16, 15 years old. Like, mm. wow. And she was, Kylie Jenner was a kid. Like, you know, you don't have no 30 year old men, you know, that my daughter looks up to that's a celebrity, you know, like having her like all close or sit, you know what I mean? Just like doing weird shit. Yeah. Like, you, he has no protective bone in his body at all. And, you know, he was, yeah, I mean, so that's what I was talking about. He was jealous. So when he started picking up the kids and taking my son places and he, putting them in like precarious situations where they're left with agents, they're left with managers, they're left with random ass people in the industry. The only thing I could think of is that you're trying to get my kids sexually abused or you're trying wow. to, you know, get them into, you know, like giving up your kids so you can be in a, in a movie. Because that's why else would you do that's, that? That's why I was asking, like, do you know if he got sold into Hollywood by his mother or anything like that? I, that's, I, don't, I don't think he was that's sold. That's the norm. Yeah, I don't, think he, I don't think he was necessarily sold. I don't think his mom knew, but I don't think she really cared. Because um, she was managing Kel and she was getting all of his money. And that's so, the point that I mean by selling. Like, they oh, get okay, money yeah, yeah. And they they just turn the blind eye to them being sexually abused. And well, I mean, that. how would you even know? How would you even know? Like, if your kid, if you live in Chicago and your kid is spending, you know, one two years in a whole different state, how would you wow. know? So how that, would you? And then, and then Kel's providing, like, like it's it's a it's really a fucked up situation because then you have somebody who's from the inner city of Chicago, right? making yeah. more money than both of the parents and you think that kid's gonna tell the parents that he's being abused so that money can stop coming in because now that mom that hated him loves him his whole family loves him now he's on tv he's a celebrity yeah because them, them, them uh those producers and executive producers and you know they'll tell they'll tell you you will never get a job in this town again and that's true and they will do that like like they, they don't play around with that you don't suck someone's dick. You don't do whatever they want you to do. They will do that. They will. They will definitely do that. So those are all credible threats. So so you know, like it, it would be naive of me to think that Kel wasn't a part of that. That would be very naive of me to think, knowing, especially now, knowing what I know now about the industry, knowing what I know now about kids and the psychology of kids. He wouldn't have told anyone because he he wanted to he wanted this he wanted fame he he finally had everything that he wanted like right at his fingertips to be famous to be on television he you know he wanted that so why would he ever tell anybody that and that that can explain a lot of the drug usage i mean yeah. to bury all that pain of having to be subjected to that yeah well i mean sometimes i think like okay if you know and i don't even know I'm, I'm sure that i'm sure that was also part of it but um and then kelt too had like he told me he started having sex at like 10 years old so that tells me that probably some kind of sexual abuse even before he got famous right because like i don't know who's those having are the ones sex that at they 10 years old huh? they already groomed those are the ones that they pick because they already groomed thank you thank you so if you have a, if you start having sex at 10 years old um you believe you're sexually mature right you think you know what you're doing at 10 years old um and i've taught at school so i've seen these these kind of kids yeah they're easy picking they are the targeted kids that that the pedophiles pick and choose especially those who don't have family support which kel had family support you know to a certain extent but his mom was always like well what did kel do now you know with like because kel was such a bad kid growing up so you know uh, Kel has never come to me and told me any of that, but I will say that during our marriage, uh, things things would come up. Like one day, he I caught him when he was coming inside the house. He had it unwrapped, and I don't even know. I don't I don't use sex toys or anything like that, so I don't even know what this is called. But he had like an unwrapped thing that looked like a penis, um, and, but it was like unwrapped. And I remember looking at it like, uh, and. Like, so since Kel was my first, that? yeah. So since Kel was my first too, we only had sex like missionary. Like I was so afraid of being a hoe. Like I was just afraid of that. I know I was married, but like I was afraid of like him thinking I was a hoe or like I don't know. But anyway, we had sex missionary. So like bringing this thing home, I was just like, 
And he was like, it was, he was like, no, it's for you. And I'm like, it's for me. I was like, why isn't, why isn't it in a package or something? <laughs> so there, there, there were all kind of, there was all kind of little stuff, you know. Um, I just saw another one that said like, if men have like boo boo stains in their underwear, and that was like a regular occurrence. So, dang, whoa, boo boo oh, stains in their underwear. As far as what, like you saying, like playing for the same team? Yeah. On that note. On that note. Not to mention another celebrity. I'm not gonna say who, but another celebrity paid Kel, and I was like, dude, you should not, you should not do this. Paid Kel like fifteen thousand dollars to be, um, to be his kid's like toy kind of thing. Dang. And then after Kel, um, after Kel went to the house and was a toy for the whole day. Um, we went to the, we were in New York and we went to the Hamptons. It was my first time in the Hamptons, but anyway, we had to catch like a little, a little plane over there. And at the time I was pregnant and I was just like, oh my gosh, I was scared. I was throwing up. I was like, I can't come back like this. But anyway, well, after Kel was the toy, they had an adult party where they basically picked keys from like different, like there was all these doors and all these rooms and you had to stay inside oh. the rooms. Yeah, whatever whatever key you picked up, you had to go inside that room with whoever's in that room. And, oh, um, okay. you know, I, I'm real good at math, right? So I was looking around, it was like 12 men, maybe. And it was like, maybe it was like, or maybe it was more, maybe it was like 15 men. No, I'm sorry, no. It was about 12 men and maybe like six women or seven women, like a little, maybe it was eight women. Maybe it was eight women and 12 men. And so I'm thinking like, and there was only like, maybe like six or seven rooms. So I'm doing all that math in my head and I'm like, I got to go. So this was like one of them freaky deaky mansion party type ordeals. Yes, it was. Like with deep dungeons and multiple rooms and tunnels. I mean, I don't, and all I didn't, types I don't know what there. was in the rooms. I didn't even get that far. I was just like, I just started doing the math in my head. And I'm like, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I said all of that until I could, I had to figure out a way to get out of there. Yeah. Wow. So you and Kel went to this event together? We went to the event together and I left by myself because I said, I'm not going back in the jumper plane. I'm like, I can't do that. I'm like, I cannot do that. So in order to get back from um, the Hamptons, it's like a four to five hour car ride and you have to go before it gets dark or else you can't go. And so thank God I thought quickly and I did that and I let Kel know that whatever happens, happens. I don't want him talking about it. Don't tell me about it. I don't want to know nothing. And Kel came back the next day. So I never came asked. Back, they looked like he was disturbed or something happened or. No, I mean, it looked like he had a good time. Oh, shit. I know which is worse. Let, huh? let, let, let me ask you a quick because I'm I'm kind of like this whole toy thing, paying someone to be a. Could you elaborate on that? Because I, I I don't have no education on that thing. Paying <laughs> to be a toy that sounds crazy as hell to me. That sounds okay. crazier than anything I've heard. Okay, have you seen on, have you seen the movie where? So far. Have you seen the movie with um Richard you know, Pryor? Right, Richard Pryor. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so basically, an entertainer paid Kel to be the clown for his kids basically to play kel kimball all day long for his kids oh, birthday party. got you got you got you all right whoo that shit sounded crazy boy, at one boy point toy. Well, i mean yeah look, i just feel like let, boy toy type shit. oh well let me say i don't know the contract was like you got to do whatever whatever needs to be done yeah because you could be doing some shit for the kids or yeah i mean that yeah, early yeah. that day but then some adult shit happened at night you know what i'm saying like he become another type of toy oh yeah and like I, like, a, like a good burger action figure up in that shit. And they, yes you know I mean? and let me say one other thing too when, it, when we had first gone when we had first like gone to one of these clubs or whatever right so we go on through the door of the clubs this man literally like palms my whole ass like under my skirt like grabs my like both cheeks both his hands so i'm turning around i'm like about to fight this man this man turns around and says i'll fuck both of you oh shit. And he's in the industry and he's like i'll both of you and oh this is someone known like a kind, not, not, not not too known but kind of known and he's like he yeah, I mean, who he is was, he what, what was his what's his name what, what, what was he in yeah, I'm not, 
Nah, Might as well. I mean, he ain't too known, so he ain't that powerful. So Do you know what? You, you know what? Got no, no, it's it's not about him being powerful. It's just like because I don't know. Like I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. This like could could be could have been a joke, right? Well, she been. disrespected you. You might as well drop. No, he he did. your whole he entire did. ass. Like. He did. He what did disrespect me, but let me say, like, the next time I saw him, he apologized. He said he was really high and he was on Sherm. Oh, okay. So, you know, I don't know nothing about Sherm, but I'm like, well, obviously that's he was really high. That's in fluid. Oh, that's okay. Is. Yeah. So he was like, I'm so, I'm sorry. I was, I had, I was doing cocaine and Sherm. So I told him, I was like, I'm not going to say nothing, but. But anyway, so he's 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 a kind of known. I'm, I'm sure you guys would know him just because he's in a lot of black movies. And so he was like, um, he was like, I'll go with both of you. And Kel didn't say nothing to that. So then at that point in my brain, I just was thinking like, did this man just bring me to like one of these like sex parties where like we were switched like, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. shit, where anything goes, huh? Yeah, because he grabbed my ass like under my skirt, like both hands, and then was like i'll fuck both of you like and i'm trying to fight. i get kicked out the club that day because i'm trying to fight the man i don't care dang and kel's still like don't do that don't do that this is gonna ruin you know you're giving us a bad name i'm like i'm giving us a bad man name and the man sexually assaulted me that's, that's when i just knew i just like you know i married a bitch i just i married a bitch i just couldn't even believe it like i just couldn't i was i was I was mad at myself. Another time, Lennox Lewis. Oh my gosh, we're in London. Lennox Lewis is like, I want your wife. Oh Damn. shit, oh, Le- Lennox. Damn. Lennox, shit. The boxer Lennox Lewis is in London. And is like, I'm about to take your wife, and Kel does says nothing at all. Uh, hey, shit, Kel right. could do against Lennox Lewis. God, what the fuck? Dang. What are you going to do? Something. Yeah, something. You, you should be saying for. something. You yeah, don't not, just not, let your yeah, wife get yeah, taken by Lennox. Lennox. Lewis. Damn, Damn, Lennox. Damn. That nigga Lennox, that nigga Lennox. I thought he Damn. played for the same team. Well, hey, might have been it, might have been a two for one, you know. Oh, I was oh, he wanted you in. Oh, he wanted you in, Kel. Might have been. Oh, he wanted a good burger and a Mondo burger, huh? Might have been. Might uh, have been. Damn. You know, Kel, Kel wore, you know, Kel's. Everybody actually, a lot of people in the industry told me that they didn't even know he was straight. So. Um, I knew wow. that he was metrosexual. I knew that he was, you know, like feminine. He definitely went shop. I, I was definitely more masculine than Kel, which was, you know, very strange for me. Um, but, you know, I feel like Kel's one of those people that's just like, I don't know who he is. He's just different characters. Like right now, he's a preacher character, you know. When he and I were together, he was, I don't know, like the has been actor character. Like he, he's got different, like, you know, like, Character like he, I don't know who the hell he is. Honestly, I, I don't know who he is. Yeah, ain't he supposed to be a youth minister or something like that? Or... That's correct. He's a youth minister, and he was doing witchcraft and uh, doing spells to yeah. seeing psychics and literally doing seances in my living room. All right, so, so that's another thing. Okay, that's another yeah. thing. So you think he picked that up from his uh, Nickelodeon times? Because you know they also say a lot of that shit going on around Hollywood too. A lot mm-hmm. of occult activity a lot of witchcraft a lot of satanic ritual abuse they get all of them involved with it all the drugs the rituals the blood drinking all mm-hmm. of that yeah well, you witnessed I, any of that or know if he was involved in any of that well he, he started, started home so my faith was like serious to me like at that time i have a different version of the bible and everything right now but at that time i was all the way into the bible all the way into religion specifically christianity you couldn't tell me nothing about it and so kept but i also have a gift i have a gift where like i can i don't know i could just feel different things energies so kel will come back and i'd be like did you see a psychic and kel would be like no i didn't see a psychic and i'll be like okay because you know if you see psychics you know those spirits can come back with you like just let me know if you did because i don't want those spirits in this house because i honestly felt like he was under some kind of like demonic possession because i was like because it it didn't really explain like he didn't he never got drunk drunk where he's drunk and hitting me so he was never like i couldn't tell if he was like under the influence of something while he was abusing me so i'm trying to i was like okay well got to be some kind of be, this was before i knew that he was like a narcissist and how he was and i didn't understand you know the, the personality type 
So I just thought like, oh my gosh, she probably has a demonic possession from going to psychics. But then there was a day that I actually came back home. This man had cut with a knife, a pentagram into the carpet. Mm. And was literally doing a seance. He had my toothbrush. Now, I know about some voodoo, okay? I got family in Louisiana, people from Panama. Mm. I know about some voodoo, okay? You're not going to be sitting in the middle of a pentagram in the living room with a candle and my toothbrush and my hairbrush. And and I want to say some kind of animal bones. Mm. Oh, yeah, and he's doing a ritual. Man, this man's trying to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. He's like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking about. You're sitting in a fucking pentagram on the, you know, I didn't even know he even knew what a triangle was. Yeah, because, you know, that's not like usual shit that kids from the south side of Chicago do, like from the hood. So I you, never, you, you I, feel like I, he I learned that kids. shit? I've never seen this. I that's never. what I'm saying. So you, you think he learned that shit like at Nickelodeon, like right there on the set? Well, well not just Nickelodeon, just being in Hollywood, period. Because, you know, you go, you go to those, those houses and they show you that shit. Oh, they do. They, I mean, you know, you a hear lot of about people, all the time. I mean, I, I've had discussions with like Britney Spears. I had discussions with a lot of people about how they like they sold their soul. Like they went to the crossroads and sold their soul to the devil. Hmm. So, like Robert Johnson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what they talked about. Oh man, like everybody was so into that. Like we had all these like just and that, during that time i just was i that's when i started seeing it like oh my gosh this is really like real you know like this is really like a war between good and evil like you really see it when it's like just the craziest stuff like people's moms having you know like stuff with people's kids like it was it was it was very strange and then the worst part about it though was that i couldn't even t like talk to anybody and tell anybody about it and then what well, like it was so common that nobody even cared like mm. it was normalized yeah sort of like, like, what dave like it's, part of the game. it's like it's part of the game like it's, like dave chappelle said the hollywood environment is sick oh it's so sick it is so sick like it is so sick it like the uh um i had gotten a tv show i was on a um this this tv show it was a soap opera like a daytime show, soap opera and at the time just turned 18 like just turned 18. i must have looked like a baby i must have looked like i was 14 15 years old and i look back at the pictures i look so young and um i was on the show con i'm constantly taking my clothes off on the show they like i had like a sex scene the man has to take down his penis and it was just like i was just like this is just such a sick industry this whole industry is demonic and possessed and so sick so that's why i said you know i i wanted to get behind the scenes and you know do stuff behind the scene i actually had written multiple episodes of kenan and kel i pitched in of course like two weeks later my idea was on film wow um, yeah yeah they still your shit quick so quick and be cool with it and be like yeah you did tell us that and i'm like okay well where's the writing credit well not yeah. yet not yet you need to write a couple more so i think i wrote about four wow dang mm -hmm. so what was kel's relationship with keenan like how did they fall were you around any of their, their relationship were they as close as everybody would think they would be oh my gosh like that was his right hand man like so for example like keenan was single so honestly i feel like kel would use keenan the fact that he was single they would always share hotel rooms so when kel was ordering up these prostitutes like a pizza um keenan was there and he'd always be like um well, I didn't do nothing with the prostitutes, but Keenan did. Like, he would always be Keenan's excuse. Keenan would always be Kel's excuse for the shit that Kel would do. Um, they were extremely close. Um, but Keenan was in the industry for a lot longer than Kel. And I think Kel was jealous, honestly. I think Kel was jealous of Keenan. And um, so, actually, when, Ke when Kel decided, because Keenan was like, let's just keep doing the show. And then Kel was like, ironically, I don't want to be on this show when I'm 40 years old, which is so hilarious to me right now. Uh, so he's on the show. Yeah. He's actually on the show at 40 yeah. years old. <laughs> like, was, literally, the, the remake, he's literally on the show. That's what I'm saying. So it's so crazy. So Kel, so Kel was like, I don't want to keep doing the show till I'm 40 years old and I'm dying, right? Because hindsight, it's like ironic. And so, um, so Kenan's like, okay, cool. Well, let's move to Saturday Night Live. So Saturday Night Live wanted both Kenan and Kel. 
So, because, you know, they're a duo. And I'm like, this is yeah. the awesome thing, right? I mean, to have a black comedic duo, like, I don't think, like, have you heard of Amos and Andy? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, and that's, and that's, you know, not right, right? I mean, Amos and Andy really isn't a black duo because it's still black-faced to me. Exactly. Um, so, I'm like, you know, this will be the first time there'll be a black you know, comedic duo. That's gonna be us. I was like, that was amazing. I was like, that's smart as hell, right? So, Kale once again listening to all these stripper hoes and all these women, instead of listening to you know his wife who's been supporting him the whole time, um, he's like, ah, no, I, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Oh, and this is another thing. This is this is another telltale sign. So, Keenan was doing the regular Keenan jokes that he does on all that he was doing the rank the same characters that he does on all that he made up some other characters right he's doing what he's you know what saturday night live is used to right the reason why they're famous yeah kel decides to do an entire stand-up routine about um about bill cosby being a pedophile come on put him pop put him pop taste my I, think I remember that shit yeah and then he also did a stand up about um, Michael Jackson being a pedophile, like, ooh, like with little boys, like, come here, little boy. And like, this was his stand up routine. So he does his stand up routine. And let me tell you, I was like, this is not it. Like, so that was the audition that he did that he didn't make the cut on Saturday Night Live because he decided to do stand up comedy. He, he tried to do stand up comedy. comedy that was a dark stand up comedy about pedophilia and wow. about. Famous pedophiles like Bill Cosby. Yeah, that and shit wasn't gonna fly. Yeah, that that's not gonna cut it. How would that? Why would you ever think that that would? And you know, and you you can't go from all that to that. And he's asking me. I remember hearing him in some article saying that I cost him his career. Like you cost your own self your career when you decided to go on Saturday Night Live and talk about Michael Jackson and Bill Cosby as pedophiles with boys. Like that's not even funny. I don't even. That's not funny, you know. Like uh, to me at all, it's not. I don't know why you're laughing about that. Why is that a joke? And so I think Keenan was. Um, Kel was very upset. Kel was very jealous of Keenan, and um, Keenan was cool about it. He was just like, "Well, if you think you know you want to be separated and you want to do that, then you should do that." And that's what that's what happened. I mean, you know, I don't even know why Kel thought that. He was even gonna be on Saturday Night Live doing those kind of jokes. I'm like, have you seen Saturday Night Live? That's ironic that he talked about Bill Cosby, but uh, Keenan played fat out. Right? Talked <laughs> about Bill Cosby. Talked about Michael Jackson. Like his his most of his 30 minute stand up or 40. I remember, I don't remember how long it was. Was all about like sexual abuse um, with celebrities. And that's yeah. crazy because Keenan mentioned on an interview when he was filming Fat Albert that Bill Cosby came on the set and told him something like, you're going to need two dicks because cause all the holes you're going to be getting when you when you star in this movie. Mm -hmm. Keenan literally told that story about Bill Cosby. Oh, that's, yeah. That's wild how all that just ties in. That's, oh, yeah. And, I, that's and, actually, really wild. and actually, Kel was supposed to be on... Kel was actually supposed to be in Fat Albert, but I'm wow. certain that somebody probably told Bill Cosby, like, oh, he did a whole stand-up routine. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bill ain't gonna wow. fuck that shit, yeah. Wow. You know, like, like Kel yeah. was supposed to be in Fat Albert with Keenan. Damn. Damn. That's crazy. Very crazy. But Kel didn't get the part, and, I, and he was, like, looking around like Dodo Bird, like, well, I wonder why he didn't get the part. Maybe because uh, he did a whole stand-up about bill cosby being a pedophile with boys <laughs> and that just spread, yeah he, he bill bill was pretty powerful around that time so. definitely you think you bill know, cosby's gonna allow yeah. you to come back and, and yeah. you know do that actually um forrest whitaker picked kel but bill cosby said no to kel of course like kel doesn't like he does not very smart he doesn't put two two three to three together he can't do it yeah because i had a fuck forrest whitaker uh, picking kel kel and bill cosby to been on uh you know Mm, Whoever wow. was involved with that shit and picking them would have been not working in Hollywood no more. Right, you're right. Well, well, actually, they did. They ended up changing. I think Forrest Whitaker ended up not doing it. I think somebody yeah, else did. Yep, yep. Yep. So you're absolutely right because Forrest Whitaker picked Kill. Um, Bill Cosby said no. Yep. And then Forrest Whitaker was off the off the uh, movie. Damn. 
Yeah, and I, and I remember, I remember tell, talking to Kel, like, you don't think that, like, Bill Cosby knows because the industry is so small. You did a mm-hmm. whole stand-up with Putin Pop and everything. Like, <laughs> you can't, like... Oh, that, you, cut, that, that got him blacklisted. I think so. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, that got him blacklisted. Yeah. I, I think his whole stand-up routine, because they're probably like, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? Like, is he going to out us? Is he going to tell us? Is he going to tell about, you know... The stuff that happened or that we did to him or whatever yeah. you know is he gonna start talking exactly that's why he didn't you know work but during that time i was like well you know um, I'm, I'm i'm trying to come up with all these ideas and they worked and this man's like no 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 i just want to be on something where you know on in the movie theaters i, I don't even know did bones even come out in the movie theaters i, I never saw i it. think that shit went straight to dvd exactly exactly yeah. so he turns down 10 million dollars he turns down a million dollars that next year to do bones and then okay so gangs 2 was supposed to be a million dollars he sells it for twenty five hundred dollars and a, a a credit in dance food twenty five hundred dollars and a credit a producer credit and actually i think he, he had to share the writing credit even though i wrote it all myself Dang. And that's the one he stole. You said he stole from me, right? Oh yeah, he stole. He, oh. Well, he didn't. He didn't really steal steal it from me. I, you know, I wasn't very smart. I was trying to do the best that I could, and I I felt bad for him really because I always had more things than acting. Like I was smart. I was talented. I could do anything I wanted to do. So I had never seen anybody that just like had one thing that they could do. Like the only thing that they could do was acting. So right. I felt bad. So he was like. I don't have anything oh and also too um he had a music group and he wanted to get signed with interscope and then i got signed with interscope as a as a rapper so like i then he was like you're just taking over my whole life like and i didn't even want to be a rapper but um we didn't have no money so i was like okay well i guess i'm signed interscope so he was pissed off about that so i felt bad and i'm like he's like i have nothing it's like, I don't have anything in my name. I don't have anything. Like, I don't have anything that's mine. So I really believe this man. I took my name off the script. Um, I even had registered the script with my name on it. I went over that registration with just Kel's name. Hey. And he sold it to Bird and a Bear Entertainment, which is um, Cedric the Entertainer's group, for $2,500 and a producer credit. Dang. And I was just like, this man is, I mean, I knew he probably had about, he has probably about second grade education. So like, I knew, I was just like, wow. But I never would I think that he would sell it for $2,500, never. Yeah. You said he had a second grade education? I would say. Dang. Second, third grade. He could read, but that's like it. So I so I see you do a lot of uh, TikToks and all that. So a lot of that stuff is it aimed at Kel? No, uh, none of it. None of it. I should chill. All of it. <laughs> all of it. Say, all, all of it. it. All I mean, of it. I mean, no, my whole, that, your whole uh, hand. Your my, whole handle is uh called Deadbeat. Dead, yeah, it's dead, called Deadbeat Dead, 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 dead Kel Mitchell. So all yeah, of it. They yeah, all, all everything. That shit. Yeah. everything that i do that I, honestly it's not just about him it's really there's i just have a problem with all these men all these deadbeats so i've actually created a website called deadbeatspay.com that is going to be a place where women can go and men can go if they have a deadbeat who's not paying and how to get their money other ways than going to court because you just waste your time and energy going so to i'm court. real nosy and i'll be reading the comments of people like under your some of your videos that you post and a lot of people say that you just cap in a lot of people say that you just bitter that Kel was doing good right now with the whole new family he's right. a youth pastor he's back getting a bag from nickelodeon so what you have to say to those uh spectators with all these accusations you know um uh, this is what i will say most women don't divorce their husband especially with kids like if a woman is leaving a man with kids you know it's got to be bad that's number one um number two somewhere they somebody believed that kel had more money than i did when we started out no i i can't i don't i mean my parents aren't like super wealthy but i've never been poor we we've, we've had money um so i actually had more money than kel had 
Um, so I think maybe just because of what I look like, maybe people are like, oh, you know, she's some dumb groupie. No, I have a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. I have a Master in Science in Computer Science, and I'm working on my PhD, so. Yeah, because if you leave it up to the people, they say that you a BBBM. Right. I'm a, yeah, yeah. A broke no. baby mom, that's what they yeah. call you. As. But but I, I will say this, I will say this, that I don't know if it's, I, I mean, you, I guess you could call it bitter, you could call it mad, you can call it upset, but. I will say that, oh, I'm pissed off because you, you don't you don't only, you know, when a person is like, like Kel knew, Kel knew that the only thing that I wanted, like my entire life, like all I talked about was being a mom and like, like trying to be a present mom and trying to be like the best mom. And we talked about this like all the time before we had kids, we talked about like, you know, what, what we weren't going to do if we didn't work out right we're young like what we weren't gonna do and he did everything that we talked about um and so like to intentionally ruin the the time in your in my life that i can't get back oh yeah i'm pissed off i don't care if you call it bitter i don't care what the hell i'm mad as hell so this is why you're going after him for the money and how are you doing that like you got like court things going like what do you got like you well I, I i won everything already in court so i'm not going back to court anymore now i'm just using my brain so now i'm just reading the law books myself and i um recently got rid of my attorney so i'm just reading the law books myself and filing everything i need to do myself because i already won in the courts now all i'm doing now is collecting so what i actually did was while Kel was online, um, I don't know if you heard that they, they had a song. His mom had a hate song, like way back in the day. Um, anyway, when they're doing their smear campaign against me, and I just I didn't respond, I didn't say anything because you know what? I'm like, I'm I'm gonna be a mom, and unfortunately, this man is my children's dad. So before I get out here saying you know the stuff that actually happened, I wanted to make sure that number one, they were old enough to understand like what was going on. And then number two, that I had their permission. So, you know, some people on there are like, well, why didn't you say something before? Well, I had to make sure my kids were okay with me okay. doing this because this is still their dad. And he's a, you know, pretty famous guy. Like, you know, it yeah. was so sad having my kids go to school and then being like, isn't your dad Kel? I mean, Kel, I mean, both kids look identical to him, which even pisses me off more. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's like, dang, I go through all the work, I do everything myself, and they don't even have my face? Nope, they, they just splitting the images of him. Man, tell Dom me about it. How many jeans? Tell me about it. Like, good Lord, this man gonna say he's that he's not their dad? Like, even question that? Like, these kids came out looking identical. Like, you got your carbon copy kids. Mm -hmm. you, you're not sure, if, you know, that's just some really, that's once again, another bitch ass man behavior. Like, that's a bitch. How do you take a paternity test for, for, and actually when we first started dating, Kel didn't believe that I was a virgin. So we actually went to a doctor to prove that I was a virgin. So he knew that I was Dang. a virgin. You, he made you go to a doctor to, to prove Dang. that you was a virgin? Wow. Yeah. Dang. So. That's insecure as shit. That's just very, Dang. very. So now you talking about after we did all of that, you had the nerve and the audacity to say the kids aren't yours. Make them take a paternity test three different kinds blood, hair, and fingerprints. Dang. And then you don't even involve yourself in their lives. You just disappear off the face of the earth. You don't involve yourself in lives. And then pop back up. The time he popped back up was when in 2010 he calls me and he says, Hey, can the kids be in the wedding? Can the kids be in the wedding? Are you serious? Can the kids be in your wedding what and you used our daughter's college our daughter's wedding fund to purchase to, to pay for your wedding her college fund her well mm -hmm. so she had two she had a college fund and she had okay. a marriage fund so okay. he, he emptied the marriage fund and the college fund wow and you're not seeing them you're not paying any support they're going to school with your whole fucking face people are asking them questions so what's his relationship with his children like as of today? Do we he, still? He, 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 my daughter just got into a car accident recently. He refuses to talk to her. Um, he treats them like how he's always done, like nothing. Like what? Like it's all about Kel. It's all about. It's always always been about him. 
it's unfortunate, but there are people that have kids that, you know, they compete with. They're my kids. So he hates me. He hates me because I decided to not fuck with him anymore, to leave him alone. Like once I realized that he had been paying for this woman's apartment with money that wasn't even his, I re and he stole the children and took them to Chicago, I refused to let him come back in the house. So he said from that point on, he was going to make my life miserable and the lives for my children miserable. Could you elaborate on him stealing the children? Sure. What so, happened with that? <clears throat> sure. So basically, he, he and I were working on our marriage. That's what he told me, that we were working on a marriage. And uh, we were going to see therapists. And that we actually agreed not to even have like a messy divorce. Like we were just going to split everything down the middle, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So um, instead... I agreed for the kids to go to visit Kel's parents in Chicago to stay there for, it was supposed to be like a week, but possibly it could turn into two weeks because Kel was filming Bones in Canada. And sometimes due to the weather, they had to stop filming. So, so a week goes by, a week and a half goes by, about two weeks go by and I'm like, okay, uh, the kids need to come back. And um, I actually called the school where my kids attended and my friend, my really good friend who I went to high school said, you know, Kel came by and picked up the kids' records and told me that the kids were going to school in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, what? They're going to school in Chicago? I was like, what is she talking about? So then I'm calling Kel's mom like a crazy person now. And um, Kel's mom answered and said, you fucking bitch ho, you're not going to get these kids. I'm not going to let you talk to these kids or see these kids until my son tells me it's okay because you're a crazy bitch. And so I hung up the phone. I called my mom and my mom was like, what? And I was like, yes, yeah, that's some." And my mom was like, what did she say? I was like, oh, I didn't want to cuss it from my mom. I was like, oh my gosh, she just sounded really ghetto. But she's from the South side of Chicago. And um, so my mom understood it. And so my mom calls her and she cusses my mom out. So my mom was like, oh damn, like this is crazy. So my dad's like trying to be peacemaker. By this time I had already bought my tickets to Chicago. Um, I have family members that are in the, um, that are Muslims out there. And uh, I called them up, trying to make sure I had enough protection, called the Chicago Police Department. And when the Chicago police got there, they came to the door and Kel's parents said, they're not there. The kids are not there. Wow. But I had already been at the house. I had um, stayed outside their house at like three o'clock in the morning. And my family members had already taken pictures of the kids like playing outside like the night before. And so I think it was a Friday. So it was like a Thursday and like the kids were playing. So he was like, no, they're there. I didn't see them leave anywhere. And so when the police got there, um, the, they're talking to me and I'm like, no, the kids are there. So they hid the kids in the basement. Then they hid the kids in the alley in the um, attic. And then while the police were looking in the attic, they took the kids outside in the and put them in the garage and hid them underneath like some blankets in the back of his parents' car because they were just going to leave with the kids. Thank God right. the Chicago Police Department stopped them. And um, I was able to leave Chicago with my kids. When I got back to California, though, um, the police officers came to my home and they were telling me they were going to do it, it was a warrant for it was a warrant for because at the same time that Kel took the kids, he also went and went to court to court in LA County and told them that I was abusing my kids, that I was a detriment to my kids and that I was completely crazy. So Kel had actually gotten sole legal and sole physical custody of the kids um, when the kids weren't even in California. Like he just lied to the courts. So I when know. I got back, when I brought the kids back, uh, I had basically had a warrant out for my arrest for kidnapping because Dang. Kel had already gotten sole legal, sole physical custody. So and at the same time that he did this, that is the exact same time that he filed for. So he filed for divorce, um, got sole legal, sole physical custody of the kids and his whole plan, his whole plan got interrupted when I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to go get my kids. So when I came back, the courts were so pissed off because they were like, wow, you came into court and you lied and said that your wife was abusing the kids and that you physically saw your wife abusing the kids, but they've been in Chicago for two weeks. Dang. so it was all bad it was all bad dang yeah and then and then and then after that um because kel was like mia you know i guess he was dating asia and i don't know what he was doing but he wasn't around his kids so during that same time his mother sued me for parent grand parental rights 
um, which means because she wasn't able to see her grandkids and Kel was blaming the fact that she wasn't able to see her grandkids on me. And so she was like, I'm going to sue you for grandparental rights because Kel had given up his custody of the kids to his mother. So, so instead of me fighting Kel for custody, I was fighting his mother. Wow. I mean, who even does that? That sounds like, a lot. That sounds like a lot going on there. Yeah. That's a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, who That's even, crazy. Who does that? Who gives up the kids? But but in his family, I will say, when I went to Chicago, the times that I went, there would always be kids with the, with the grandmother and no dad and no mom. And I'd be like, whose kids are these? Like, like how does the mom and the dad leave the kids, right? Like, but... So I already had that in my head. So I'm like, dang, this is just what they do. This is like so normal to him that Kel was like, I don't have time to raise kids. I'm acting. I don't have time for that. So I'm like, so you think I'm going to be cool with this? And it, But it was really all about child support. So he wanted the kids to not be with me so he could pay his mother child support or, or whatever. So how, how successful you think you want to be in getting any of that $3 million that that you're looking for? Well, I've got it. I've close to got close to a million right now because I just secured the house that um, he just purchased in 2020. So that's worth a million dollars. So oh, I just, so you so you secured so it's actually your house now. It's my house now. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I secured the house, and then um, I recently filed affidavits and information to the IRS because he's been hire, you know hiding money through the IRS. So I recently did that. Um, you can do what's called a, there's all different ways, but basically it's called a, a, a till keeper levy where it's a levy that basically when Kel, instead of paying Kel directly, then all the companies that, you know, like Nickelodeon, all these places that he's worked for are going to start paying me directly. Um, wow. so that's next. So I'll be getting the checks from his chips and coinage production. And then his wife gets on the stand and says she's been helping him hide money. So she's probably going to be going to jail. Dang. Um, Damn. Yeah, I'm not fucking around. Like, um, I have had enough. I am done. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. And we're about to go into a huge, huge, huge uh, depression. So mm -hmm. having cash yeah. on hand is so important. And my kids don't have anything now, you know, and I don't have anything now. And so it's like, I'm getting all my money. So, I, so how are you supporting yourself right now? Like, well, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have anything from him, but um, oh. yeah, I don't have anything from him, but I, I create websites. I have a trucking company. I have about seven different sources of income. That's good. Yeah. So that means you ain't got to go get that job at Mondo Burger. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, what? I've been so fortunate. I have been able to be a stay at home mom through all of this. Um, just hustling. I'm actually going to write my book about so many different ways to hustle but the number one hustle that actually kept me paying for all this stuff and in a house and I, so i never had to work was actually going to college getting my degree being a black woman in um, national society of black engineers being a black woman in stem all those scholarships paid for everything i don't think people know this but once your college is paid off then everything else you keep mm. oh that's wow yeah, so like I was getting, you know, like million dollar scholarships. Well, it wasn't million dollars in total, but like AT and T. I had a Google scholarship. I had AT and T scholarships, multiple scholarships for being, and I kept a three point eight, three point nine GPA. So wow. I was, thank God, I was able to, you know, like figure that out and be able to support myself, my kids, without going to work physically, just going to school and just focusing on that. Yeah, you better write that book about the dark side of Hollywood and all that shit that happened to you. Oh, that, definitely. That shit, that shit would definitely sell. People's interested definitely. in it. That's like a commodity these days. That yeah. shit would definitely Well, sell. you know, it's it's scary. It's kind of scary, though, because everybody that seems to come out with it end up killing themselves, jumping yeah, off the of Yeah, 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 that's true. You know, that's so true. I'm just, I'm staying away from that book. Mm, that's that's true. true. <laughs> I've already been to jail for stealing my own house. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if I even tell you what happened with that, but I actually ended up pleading guilty to grand theft of my own house and being on oh, probation shit. for five years. Okay. Dang. And, Kel, and, and because of how everything worked out, um, paid off the IRS back debt of $220,000. So he owes me that too, which I just remembered. So I, I definitely need to add that to that. Dang. Yeah. 
but you know people you know just because of the way i look i guess and because nobody knew who i was and i never said anything i think people just assumed i was some gold digger you know groupie woman and so far from the truth so far from the truth but at yeah, the time you, i didn't <laughs> care you know I was yeah like, you get a lot of hate comments oh people, i do man. i do they're mad i'm wearing a bathing suit i just lost almost 170 pounds so I'm gonna wow. put bathing suits on. You might see cheeks, you might see boobs. I have it. I'm so proud of myself that I lost all this weight. I'm so happy. And I don't think anything's wrong with it. And I've always been a person who, I've been, I guess, an exhibitionist. I've always been naked. So when I put clothes on, that's doing you guys a favor. You know, I don't even, so some people, oh, that's slutty. That's this, that's that. No, some people are okay with their bodies and are comfortable in them. You know, and I'm one of them. So. I don't, you know, men, unfortunately, you guys give out dick, right? Like, I'm never going to have a shortage of dick, right? Probably in my life. Um, so, <laughs> you know, uh, um, I don't think, you know, I don't think me, what I have on has anything to do with that. You know, men are out taking dick from kids, you know? Oh, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Men are, I see pregnant women that were have no legs and like a little bit slow. I mean, not to, I mean, I, I, I'm sure there's another way to say that, but you know what I'm saying? Like men will, some men will literally have sex with anything. So yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah like this mind, misogyny mind. is so crazy. Like just because I'm, I'm wearing a bikini, that's sexy. No, that's sexy to you. You know, that's sexy to you. You're turned on by that. But why should women have an issue? Right. Cause women get raped wearing complete cover. I worked in a Muslim school. So many women were raped at, at like in their home towns wearing complete burqas completely covered so it has nothing to do with what you're wearing it has nothing you know men are good if they're rapists they're fucking they're rapists right well i've been seeing a lot of women hating under your comments they say oh sis you need to get help you crazy yeah girl. oh yeah they're yeah. mad oh my gosh that's what i realized i said you know what some people are bullies and they want you to be bullied they don't want you to tell your story because if you tell your story the person they fucking over might hear it and might want to tell their story you know, the people that have all those comments are there. I, I put them in two categories. Either they're cowards and they just been a coward their whole life. Like they don't even understand or know how to stand up for themselves. They're just so used to like dying these slow deaths. That's one option. Or number two, they are the bullies. Because like when I see people talking about their stories on these, you know, apps and stuff, I'm like, do whatever you got to do. Like, why should I even be invested in that? Like, that's so weird to me. Like, I don't know. Do you guys ever get invested in, like, this person needs to stop telling their story? Like, nah. Nah, we want people to tell their story. That's yeah. right that's, that's our job, actually. We <laughs> we got a platform for people to tell their story. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying, like, even, even if this wasn't your job, like, would you be one of those people that would be like, shh? Oh, nah, nah. I don't know. Nah. Yeah, that's I, so that, weird. We, we ain't that heavily invested in that shit. Right, no, that's we weird. Like, okay, like, okay, like somebody trying to do whatever they're trying to do. Like, I'm not even, I don't even care. But so to me, if you are one of these people that's like writing these comments in here, you really need to check your own self because you are the problem. Like, you are the bully. Right? Like, I mean, some people in the comments are saying like, this, I'm lying about it. Like, who can make this up? I mean, all the stuff that happened, who, who gonna sit there and make all that up? That's a lot of shit to make up. Who, who, who? And, and then who's going to make it up and then have all the court records to back it up? How is that even possible? Like, I've been planning this whole thing. Like, come on. And Kel is really irrelevant, right? I mean, he's like, he's irrelevant for a lot of people, you know? So it's like, why, why do, he's not Will Smith. You know what I mean? Like, who, I don't even, I really don't even know people that would make up this. Because it's also embarrassing. It's also embarrassing. You know, like every day I think about it, like, oh my gosh, I let this five, eight little puny man like hit on me. Like I'm pissed off at myself. You know, it's embarrassing. Uh, you know, this is nothing to be proud of. Like I let this little man like take my money. Like I'm went to jail. Like this isn't, this isn't a flex. Dang. Nah, that damn sure ain't no flex. It's not a flex. So like, what would be my, what would be the point? Clout? Like, a, like, come on now. If yeah, I that's really what they saying. Be... They saying clout. That, right, yeah, right. I see they, a lot they, of that. Right, but if I really wanted to be famous, you don't think I could be famous? You don't think I could have been famous if I really wanted to be? 
I don't know. You, I don't know. You feel like it. I mean, anybody could become famous. Right. Anybody, anybody, right here might make you famous. Anybody can yeah. be famous. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm an attractive person. I have all kind of extra assets that people like to see on movies and TV, even if I were to do just videos, like if I really wanted to be famous and be in the entertainment industry, I have all the qualifications. So you already got your defense prepared for the comments that's going to be under our comment section also, because <laughs> our subscribers could get vicious a little bit. Shit, they be attacking us sometimes. So. Oh, do they? Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's hell like, yeah. yeah, but it's like, what, what would I gain from that? Like if I, if I really wanted to be famous, I could def I could have been famous. I could have continued my acting if I really wanted to do that. There was nobody had blacklisted me. I wasn't, you know. I could have continued doing acting if I want. If I wanted to be famous, I I definitely could have been famous. I didn't want to. I'm, I I don't. I still like even like doing all this stuff now. I'm really like an introvert. I'm really a nerd, honestly. Nerd with a body, but I'm just a nerd, and I always have been. I've been always a nerd. Um, I don't I don't even you know it's like it's like has to go through now just because I want my daughter to see I want all women to see that you don't have to do this you don't have to sit down and be quiet and take these kind of men shit they're never gonna change and get your money at the beginning you know and another thing too I wish I would have done is drop them kids off like you know because imagine like and that's the other part that i'm, I'm kind of i'm definitely kind of bitter about this because it's like oh my gosh bro like still to this day still to this day i'm the only parent that went to all the parent teacher conferences i went to all the plays i went i put the kids in all the events i paid for their you know their schools and their education i got the tutoring i took them to the doctors and to complete like kel had to do nothing like nothing at all so i feel like that's a gift you know, do you know how many people have to struggle? Like, there were times when I used to be like, dang, well, okay, should I, I don't know, do something I need to do for myself or do something with the kids, the kids. Constantly. So I gave of my life. Not only that, but I almost died during childbirth having my kids. Wow. So, you know, obviously they're more important to me because I almost lost my life having them. So it's just kind of like, then you're going to, you know, instead of saying I was wrong and I did all these things and, you know, she's telling the truth, instead of saying that, you want to diss me, you want to diss the kids, you, you don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck. And so these people that are the bullies out here not giving a fuck, oh no. The people that you did not give a fuck on are coming back with a vengeance. We're not playing anymore. So, you know, and, and it's these kinds of things that keep like domestic violence hidden. It's these kinds of things that keep sexual abuse hidden. People should not be, t you know, being quiet about when somebody is abusing them. This is financial abuse. Kel did financial abuse. He did domestic violence. Okay, so, you know, you, you, you can't just decide, I'm gonna create a whole new virgin, Pastor Kel, still say fuck my kids, still say fuck you, even though he's making $600,000 a year, he's making over $60,000 a month. So you, so you feel rather, like his, his whole youth pastor thing is just an act and he's not sincere or, or you feel like he is? I, I think he's just insane. I just think he's insane. I, I don't think he can be sincere because I don't even think he understands what that is. See, he knows how his grandfather was a pastor. He's been around pastors. He's gone to black churches. So he knows how to act the role of the pastor, you know. Um, I don't think it's about that. I just think that this is just a whole nother role. I don't, I don't think he believes in God. I don't think he has any faith at wow. all. I think he is demonic. I don't think he has any faith. I mean, wow. who can? How can you have faith? How can you believe in God and you do this? How? How? That's like an oxymoron. How do you? How do you have faith in God, and believe in God, and you screw your kids over and take their money and don't ever give it back? My kids have to beg him for money. Like my daughter has to beg him after he stole her money, stole her college funds, stole her. They have to beg you for money. Even though you're making sixty thousand dollars a month and you're buying two thousand dollars shoes and you're paying fifteen thousand dollars for baby photography, but my kids have to, you know, like my kids have to basically grovel to him. And then he tells my daughter, "You just, I didn't just so I'm, I don't, I don't really like seeing you because you look like your mom." I mean, that's just such a lie. 
I mean, that's just weird. Like, you do yeah. weird. Wow. He said that recently? Shit. Huh? He said that recently? Yeah, recently. Wow. Like, you look like your mom. I mean, that's just so psychologically fucked up because she doesn't. We don't look anything alike. She looks just like him. So, you know, that's like some re really weird psychological weirdo stuff that I'm not used to. But Kel is used to that. You know, in life, you want to make sure that you just stay away from people who have to, like, work for their parents' love. I never made my kids work for my love. My kids can cuss at me. My kids can cuss me. My kids can tell me whatever's on their mind because I want to be able to know when someone's abusing them. I want them to be able to stand up for themselves. So my kids are unfiltered. And I think it's better that way. That way you get the truth, right? good or bad. My kids will tell me the truth, good or bad. Right. You, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that and then like, I'm just gonna reinvent my life. And then he paid over a hundred thousand dollars to you know have Asia get pregnant. Like now you, you, after you have two kids that you screwed over, fucked over, said you don't give a fuck about, you pay a hundred thousand dollars to have two more kids. And then you don't want to pay me my money? Like, dude, out of here, man. And you know, this is the craziest part, though, because I don't know if you guys ever watched the show 48 Hours. You guys watch that show? No, I haven't uh, watched seen it. Not oh, yet. you haven't seen it? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's like a it's like a show where, like, all these, it talks about the people that die and get murdered. And I see, you know, all day long, people in Chicago are dying for, like, $60 in a blunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know about that now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, people are losing yeah. their lives over $60 in a blunt, and you... Owe somebody millions of dollars? Like, you know, like, come on. You from the south side of Chicago? Just pay your dues. Do what you're supposed to do as a parent and as a dad and, and as a pastor. And, you know, I think every single person could have, you know, like, Kel could, you know, maybe if he really, you know, comes to terms with what he actually did and, like, Fesses up to it and owns up to it. He could actually be a changed person. This could all be a part of his story. But don't be walking around like ah, I did nothing wrong. Cap, cap, cap. No, be honest. Now, like one time in your life, tell the truth. Finally, once in your life, once in your and he, and he could still have a relationship with his kids, a better one. He's got this fake ass. Really, he's like they keep coming to me like I'm a bank. Well, what else are you? You don't provide emotional support. You don't ask them how their day is. You bring them along for photo ops. Dang. You know, my daughter's crying to him. My daughter recently told him she felt like she was gonna unalive herself. And this man texts her back with the wrong number to the, um, a wrong number to a suicide hotline. He gives, he gives her the suicide hotline wrong number through a text. Dang. Man, and that, that was just... something that he struggled with, also. Yeah, how do you do that? How did your daughter tell you this? And she's reaching out to you. How do you do this to your kids? Like, how do you? I don't even know. Like, how you know, not only just a pastor, you believe in God. How are you even like human? Who does that? Who and then I don't know some people are like, Well, what is they like? What is his reason for doing all this? And let me tell you his reason. His reason is because I said no. I was done. I'm not having it. And unfortunately with narcissists, excuse me, you can't do that. You can't tell them no. You can't tell them no. They're going to do everything in their power to make your lives miserable. But not anymore because people are fighting back. So I hope, you know, anybody out there committing domestic violence, doing any kind of stuff like this, let me tell you, women are getting there their licenses and everything else and the only way really to to end domestic violence is to kill them first so wow hey that's it is what it is that's that's your message to the women who suffer in domestic violence you, you know men you know men suffer domestic violence also. i do if, if you if you believe that your life is in jeopardy and your life is in danger and this person is physically you know abusing you and you believe and believe me you could die on accident right i mean I do hope people can know this. Like you can die on accident. Okay, so if this person is doing all these things to you, they're trying to unalive you. That's what they're trying to do. So the only way to get out of that relationship would be to kill that person first because you're not protecting yourself. No other way. How, how else will domestic violence stop? 
if the people that are being abused don't defend themselves how i mean any just in life like even if you look throughout history even like martin luther king martin luther king you know got murdered we all know who murdered martin luther king right and malcolm x and a lot of other people we all know who did that and um did anything happen when martin luther king was murdered no did anything happen no it wasn't until people started tearing up stuff breaking up stuff that stuff ends that's when we got the civil rights laws so we possibly could still be slaves if there weren't slave revolts right people don't just stop doing you wrong you have to put an end to it nobody's just gonna kumbaya and you know we still got racism wells fargo turning down 60 percent of black homeowners um mortgage refis during the absolutely well well fargo that that's a whole criminal organization right there right. but i'm just saying do you think these people these people don't stop the only time they stop is when you stop it when you put it into it when you stop mm-hmm. it right nobody nobody everybody's going to continue to screw you the fuck over until you like they keep teaching this passive stuff no like the passive stuff doesn't work being quiet i was quiet for 10 years you think that worked no he just kept getting worse that's what they do so yeah, anybody who's in a, getting abused in a situation where you're getting abused, if a person is touching you, you don't want them to touch. The only way for you to end that is to tell, is to talk about. It. That's the that's, only way. That's why I was at. That's why I was telling you earlier. Let us know who put their damn hands under your skirt and touch your ass. Let you put them on blast. They because they probably doing it to other people right now. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I. I accepted his apology and it never, you know, so like, and I told him, I gave him my word. Like, I'm just, I'm, you know, I gave him my word. Uh-huh. Like, unless he passes away or dies or something, that's probably when I would say it. But um, all while he's alive, I got to tell I got to, I am loyal like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm loyal like that. But I will tell you that um, Eddie Murphy was the one who, uh, <laughs> who uh, invited Kel to be the toy to his kids. Oh, shit. Oh, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> He's got the best track record, right? Yeah. Hey. That's the best around the trannies and shit. So, so he the one that had the party, the adult party right afterwards in the Hamptons. Wow. Okay. Damn. Oh, Damn, he, Eddie. He got the parties now. Now I know. Now you guys you Yeah, got- he got the song party all the time. Shit, he ain't make that song for no reason. Come on now. You guys should know about Eddie Murphy and his parties and what Eddie Murphy likes. That's kind of oh, yeah. ironic because his uh his mentor was Richard Pryor. Yeah. And Richard Pryor did the movie called The Toy. Yeah, we go. Yeah. And he hired. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was like, man, it's just so it was so weird to me because I was like, dang, you're really gonna be the toy for Eddie Murphy? Like, that's crazy. Cause it I would feel weird doing that, like just as a person. Like he ain't gonna say no to Eddie because Eddie got power in Hollywood. So yeah, he thought he was gonna get all kind of movies and shows. Did that uh, happen? Hell no. Now, did, now Eddie, Mur- did Eddie Murphy put Kelly in any movies? I never oh. seen Eddie. Put but Kelly you know what's crazy movie. about this? Eddie Murphy used to go at Bill Cosby all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I, I, I don't know if you ever seen uh, Eddie Murphy stand up, but. He had a whole yeah. bit. Yeah, he did. Fuck Bill he did. Cosby. Yeah, he did. You're right. He did. Tell Bill to have a coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. Yeah, he did. He did. You and are and, then, and right. then Keenan go. I mean, not Keenan. I'm sorry. Kel go and he does that bit for Saturday Night Live, the, the audition, going at Bill Cosby. Right. Wow, that's a crazy connection right there. Very much so, especially. Because, I mean, they could have talked about a lot of shit that night. He was the toy. Man or or after like i don't really know like i was never the kind to check cell phone messages like Damn. i never did that besides wow. that one but um yeah so I, w- I so i wasn't checking up on kel i wasn't trying to see like who else he was talking to so and kel would go back and forth to new york so you know definitely i i don't know but all i know is that he never put him in no movies i do know that much so whatever he did and thought he that's what he was telling me he was like oh my gosh they're so gonna put me in movies and i just looked at him because this is the this is like this is like kind of like new new booty stuff like as soon as people come to la like people tell you like you know like i informed other women like if they're gonna tell you they're gonna put you in movies you sign a contract first before you do anything right yeah exactly Make so sure eddie it, so eddie promised him movie deals after oh, that? Eddie, 
all kind of stuff Eddie Murphy promised. Damn. Well, according to Kel. Who knows? Oh, because uh, Kel could have been lying to me about it, right? I, uh, you know, he promised him because at the time Eddie Murphy was um, doing like the Disney movies. Yeah, he was doing Doolittle and all that yeah. shit. Yeah, so, so Kel thought he was going to be in there with like Kyla Pratt. He wasn't in not one movie. And no telling what type of freaky shit Eddie was doing with him that night. Could have been dressing him up in all types of lingerie, yeah. all types of shit. I wouldn't have mind because, you know, Kel hey, dressed this him. On. Yeah, he dressed hey, him. Put this on. On. Let me see how you look in this. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Yo, this shit getting crazy. Oh, all these connections are crazy. I mean, because, I mean, why would he just do that bit out of nowhere going at Bill Cosby and shit? And now that you're saying know. that he that he has some type of connection with Eddie Murphy, I mean that's some shit that had hired Man. someone to be a toy for your kids. Man, it was so crazy to me because because that was one of my connection. my favorite movies. So like Richard Pryor, like seeing him, like oh man. Um. So wow. yes. So I was like, and I felt disrespected. Like I don't know, even as a man, like I'm not a man, I'm a woman, but it was disrespectful to me. Like I felt disrespected. Yeah. You like, felt disrespected like, for your man to, for him to even accept the job being a goddamn toy. Right. Right. Like, I'm feeling disrespected. Damn. Like, at least filming, at least, like, making a move, like, have something else to it besides being a clown. Like, you're basically yeah. paid to be a clown. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I know. So that man that grabbed your ass that night, he was actually at the Eddie. He was at Eddie's house. Oh, no, he wasn't at Eddie's house. Oh, all right. I was, <laughs> whoa, I'm about to say, damn. He was not at Eddie's house, but there were a lot of people at Eddie's house. Yeah, you always hear Eddie having part par- parties and shit. Uh, Eddie had a lot of people at his house that are in the industry. Yeah. Think of, what's, what is it? What's his song? Uh, Jr. Like the party all the time. Yo, party, party all the time. Huh? Party yeah. over games and shit. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Very Damn. Crazy. I didn't yeah. even think a black man would actually hire another black man to be a goddamn toy for. His Thank life. you. That's, that's got kind no of respect. crazy to me. Like that, Thank that's, you. That's, that's wild. Like that's that. Like like when you said that, like the first time when we didn't know it was Eddie, I thought it was a white man. Like, uh, yeah. I, like like automatically, I'm like, damn, what white man in the ha- Hamptons had Kel running around? Well, I'm glad goddamn. I said who it was. But, you know, Eddie Murphy does have five kids or six kids, so it makes sense. But still, like, I just thought it was just the most completely disrespectful. I thought it was disrespectful. I felt disrespectful. Yeah, you know what? Like, sort of like you know, no type of too. Yeah, yeah, it was a humil- That's called humiliation ritual. Yeah, I, I really did. And also, too, because Kel looked up to Eddie Murphy, you know, as a yeah. comedian. So yeah. I just felt like, and as another black comedian, like, that's some disrespect, that's some disrespectful stuff to me. But you call it humiliation, which that makes sense. But still, nothing even came from it. So I was thinking to myself, like, yeah. dang, Kel might not have had good, you know, never mind. Well, you got you got it's, a, it's, a, it's another connection here. Listen to this. This is some deep shit. Now, mm-hmm. Eddie got kicked off of SNL. You remember, they didn't yeah. allow Eddie back. Right. So, so when, when oh. Kel went for that audition, he could have easily hit Eddie up like, "Yeah, Eddie, what should I do? True. You was on SNL. What True. could I do to get on SNL?" True. He could have gave him that whole bit because it seemed like it was a war between Bill and Eddie all these years. Yeah, well, oh, so maybe he, maybe he ruined Bill, him, huh? Bill, Bill was trying to block Eddie from doing a lot of shit. That's why oh. Bill was trying. Bill was trying basically, uh, you know, doing shit behind the scenes. That's why. That's why. That's why uh, Eddie Murphy came out with that bit because Bill was doing a lot of shit behind the scenes. You gotta realize a lot of these, the, a lot of these motherfuckers be playing dirty behind the scenes. They True. Sure Blocking True. you from getting roles. You know what I'm saying? All types. True. Of shit. True. True. Yeah. No, they were. Yeah. People. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that, well, that's the part. That's why I was like, because I was like, I was even telling Kel like, okay, cool. Like he really wants you to be the toy for his kids' party. Like work out a deal before you get there mm-hmm. right like work out a deal before you get there like why in the hell would you agree to this without having like a tv show lined up a, a movie something like why would you agree to this like i'm a, okay i'll do the toy bit for twenty thousand, and then you know um i'll also do be in a movie but like why would you on a humbug do that mm-hmm. kel was being used as a chess piece hey. mm-hmm. 
that makes that makes a lot of sense now especially when you said that um him and i forgot about that that him and bill cosby were feuding and then that's yeah. why because i because i was wondering like where did he, i didn't even know where Kel got these jokes from then that was eddie murphy too. yeah because after, yeah, after eddie murphy said tell bill have a coke in the small and shut the fuck up bill bill start doing a lot of shit behind the scenes against eddie against oh. so it was like a whole feud so he so he basically black blackballed eddie and he tried to, but he tried Richard, to. That Richard shit didn't Pryor, work. That shit ain't work because yeah. Richard Pryor was there to make sure that shit ain't go down. And, and just think about it: when they finally let Eddie back on SNL, his whole skit was about Bill Cosby. Yeah. True. In jail. True. Like, ha! I won at the end. I'm on TV. You in jail. Right. True. True. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Because I, I, I honestly couldn't understand it, and and I do. So at the time, um, we had just finished filming um, Ganked. And so he was really, Kel was really tight with Cat Williams. So I thought maybe Kel was running by himself with Cat Williams. But then I was just like, it didn't really sound anything like Cat Williams. And I'm like, dang, Cat Williams is telling you to say this? Like, he's not like. So I, I didn't know. Because, and actually, you know what? He was, Kel was gone. A lot of the, a lot of days, a lot of nights, Kel was gone. So that's making sense. It's a lot dang. of politics. That's Hollywood politics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, but it's just to me that's just just so sad though, because it's like you do all this stuff, you sell your soul, you do all this stuff, and what do you get from it? Nothing. At the end, you don't get shit. Man, like so, and this is anybody that's in the industry. Somebody tells you, "Oh, you do this, you be in a studio. Oh, you do this, you do you do this, you do that. Whatever they tell you to do." Like when I was signed to Interscope, um, I my music I didn't have cussing in it, and it was very like about political stuff. I'm into like you know like tell pro and like i'm into like pro black political stuff yeah. um so anyway so i play them and they're like what is this shit they're like what is this shit they make kel leave the room I, they're like we don't want your husband out the room they corner me like in the room and they're like you're supposed to be talking about pussy you're supposed to be talking about you know popping it and like being a stripper like i'm not a stripper i'm a mathematician like what okay. well that's why he that's what explains with the uh why the the uh, women that's on top in the industry right now man so yeah start, they're trying start, to make me be you know, something i'm man. not they're like they're like men don't care about what you say they just look at you like it doesn't matter what you say stop writing your shit <laughs> they're like oh, no we, you can't write nothing anymore we're gonna have full control and i had signed my contract said i have full control of my like everything like how i look my everything i could deny clothes like i had i had thought about that yeah. So that was all in my contract. They're like, no, nah, no, nah, fuck that. You, this is the industry. You're, you're signed to Interscope. We own you. You do whatever the fuck we tell you to do. And if you Dang. don't want to do that, then you're on the shelf. So I bow, I bowed out. I'm out. Peace, deuces. I'm gonna take care of my kids. I don't give a fuck about. It. I didn't think give a fuck about the industry enough to lose my soul to have my kids yeah. see me to have people even like this girl went to private school is a road scholar, mathematician. But she talking about she was selling her pussy. Like, come on, they would have. Somebody would have figured that out, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, your, your folks were like, "Nah, that ain't her." The yeah, industry, somebody industry, that would have been a fake rapper. Like, man, that's just no. I was like, no, I'm not about to be out. And he's like, "But we can get you in the strip clubs," and I'm like, no. <laughs> Dang, I'm, I'm done. I'm just done. I, I, it's not none of that's gonna be me. And I, I thought about it though. I can't even lie. I'm not even gonna lie. And at this same time, like, um, I mean, I got asked to be in like Playboy. I got asked to be in all kind of stuff. So, so, so that and, on, and all the propositions, other probably other advances that they made towards you, you know, you the Holly, regular Hollywood shit, like yeah, Hollywood. regular Hollywood stuff. Yeah, right. yeah. no, yeah. Kel, Kel, Kel wanted to go to the Kel wanted to go to the Playboy Mansion, and 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 he couldn't go to the Playboy Mansion unless I came with him to the Playboy Mansion. I mean, what is that? Huh. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you would have been all night. I want to fuck both of y'all. Hey, man, let me tell you. It would have we been went. that all night. We went to the Playboy Mansion. Oh, y'all went there. Yeah, oh, okay. We went. We went. Yeah, so how yeah. was that experience? Um, everything that they say it is like you know Damn. just stuff happening. You know, like I remember they asked me to do um to do a calendar. And I, I think they were like 50,000 and they were like 100,000. And I might think about it, I honestly probably should have done that calendar. I really should have done that. Just because I think that would have been cool to see myself like that, like 
I don't agree. I don't think I have no pictures of myself like that back in the day. Um, but um, besides that, uh, but I remember thinking to myself, and then Kel was like, "You just, you just want to go to, you just want to go to those parties to be with old white men." Like, I went to school with white people, and I've seen old white men and what they like to do. And uh, yeah, no, no, I never wanted to be with no old white men like at all. And I would have never lived inside of the house. I would have never done anything like that. I just would have probably just taken some pictures. Um, but yeah, Kel didn't care nothing about that. Oh, he was, you know, while he was doing it, he was happy. He was, he was all about it. They had a lot of drugs there. Kel would say he didn't do drugs there. That's what he would tell me. Um, so actually when Kel came out with that video that he was dissing me and talking about all his drug use, I was just in shock. I was like, wow, you just lied to me this whole time. Telling me you're not on drugs. You're just depressed. Damn. Damn. Yeah, because I had no clue he was on drugs at all. And I would ask him. He would do weird stuff, though, like take apart shit. Um, but I hadn't seen anybody on drugs, so I didn't know. Like, that's the thing. Mm. Yeah. Hey. Well, he admitted himself that he struggled with drugs, so. Yeah, but I had seen another interview that he was that he was like, that I introduced him to drugs or something like that. And I was like, What? I have um, sickle beta thalassemia, so my whole life I was in and out of the hospital. I almost died during childbirth. Like, I've never done drugs like that. I've done weed, yeah, marijuana, okay. And uh, drink alcohol, but I've never been an alcoholic. And I just started weed, like, tried weed in 2021 when it was legal. <laughs> so. Dang. Sheesh. That was, <laughs> that was definitely a. Uh... A lot to endure, boy. With that, you got you. Yeah. Should be, you should be writing you a book. I am. I'm almost done with it because, yeah. and actually, there are multiple books. It's actually going to be a series because it has been like that's why I know. Like, I'm obviously a warrior. I guess you know, I'm a warrior. I I, I don't you know nothing. This this all this life that has shown me recently, just just my entire life, just proves to me that still you're not ever like I'm never gonna. You're not going to defeat me. I'm not going to go away quiet. I just, I don't have it in me. I don't, whatever it is, whatever the situation is. Because I'm going against the district attorney. I'm going against all the people that put me in jail. I'm, so it's not like I'm just going against Kel. I'm going against the judge. Recently, well, in 2013, a judge stopped my child support while my kids were 9 and 12. Um, which is completely illegal. So I'm going against the judges and I'm going to show everybody how to do it. So yeah, so I'm going against everybody. I'm filing lawsuits against every single person in my life who was supposed to be protective or in a position of power and they failed and they violated my constitutional rights. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not letting it go because you know what, if I don't, if, if, if when people stop talking and people don't do this, it continues. And I don't want this to happen to my daughter, to my grandchild. I don't want any other people to go through what I had to go through. Uh -huh. Heavy stuff. Some heavy stuff. It did. It sucked for a very long time. It still sucks even today. Like when I don't have enough money for stuff, or like my daughter's car, like I got into another car accident. Like it, it still sucks. It's horrible. But you know what? At least I have my life. At least I can go to sleep at night knowing I did, you know, the best that I possibly could. I didn't cause any all of the, you know, all of this. I'm and, and I'm thanking God every day that I'm even able to pick up the pieces and I'm still here, able to support my kids, and I'm still in their lives, you know. And I got to enjoy them by myself. I got to enjoy them as children. Now, those Your are kids are adults now, though, right? They're in their twenties. Um, yeah. So my son is twenty-one. He just turned twenty-two, and my daughter is twenty. Okay. So do you want to promote all your social medias and all that type of stuff? Uh, sure. Let everybody know where they can find you at. And sure. So the website will be coming out Mother's Day. Um, it is called Dead Beats Pay. D-E-A-D B-E-A-T-S-P-A-Y DeadBeatsPay.com um, You can catch me on uh, TikTok. Well, under Kel for deadbeat dad kel mitchell and then i'm also on instagram as ty underscore banging great all right all right so uh like this we're gonna conclude the interview right there is there any last thing you want to say before we we exit 
I don't know. You know, actually, I really like say just you know, people just watch your kids. You know, think about the history and the background of the people. Don't let your kids look up to these celebrities. I mean, you know, like yeah. I agree yeah. with that. Just I, do, that, do it. Don't before you don't know who they are. You really don't know who these people are. So. <laughs> You know, get that through your kids' minds because I know some people are like, I wouldn't have let R. Kelly pee on me. I wouldn't have let R. Kelly pee on me, but I would have let Tupac pee on me. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, watch your kids. Talk to them about this. You know, let them know. Stop looking up to people just because they're on the internet or because they're a teacher or because they're a coach or because stop doing that because that's where pedophiles hide. They hide in plain sight. People that are evil are going to hide in plain sight. These are people, your family members, your friends. That's where all the sexual abuse happens in families, between families. So stop mm -hmm. keeping it in your family. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tell somebody. And you have a choice. You can always get out of any situation, whatever situation you're in. You can handle it. But you got to talk to people. You got to tell people. And then to, to the bullies out there, stop telling people to stop telling people. Please. Okay? Mind your business. Okay? Just... <laughs> wow yep all right, wow. Damn. all right so we appreciate you for coming on the Definitely platform appreciate you. and um we'll be thank talking you. to you we'll be talking to you real soon thank you appreciate yeah i mean you. we probably are, this is very i was looking at the time like dang i'm sure you're gonna have to split this up a little bit but um Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You, <laughs> we yeah, we definitely gonna put it out in parts for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And plus, people hear the message better when you put it out in parts. You know, I think so too. A lot of people it's a got lot. short. It's, it's, a lot. it's a yeah. Lot. People have short attention spans, so in yeah. order for them to get the full message, we have to put it in parts so they can say, you know, get it a little bit at a time. It's a lot to digest. Yeah. yeah well, let, well, let me know. I'm, I'll make sure to. I'll promote it too with my TikToks about the subject. Definitely. Gotcha. Gotcha. Definitely. Gotcha. So we be in touch. Uh, yeah. okay. So this concludes the interview. Thank y'all got y'all got y'all got all this information, Curry Gang. So you know what I'm saying? Like this video, yeah. thumbs it up, share it, share it with everybody on your social media, and that's that. <laughs>